Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 36 of Never Before Seen. My name is Amber Cyper, and I am going to be your host tonight as we bring you a run of a game that has never before been seen in a mainline GDQ event. As always, if you happen to speedrun a game or a category that has never been run in an AGDQ, SGDQ, or GDQX event, and you would like to submit it to the show, type exclamation mark NBS into the chat, and you'll find the link to be able to send me your runs, and I would love to have you on board. Uh... Tonight here on Never Before Seen, I am extremely excited to have what has become my personal favorite game in the Pokemon series, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Halkiri is here to show off the any percent category of the game, and he is joined by three, count them, three fantastic folks for commentary. And thank you so much for being on the show tonight, Halkiri. How are you doing tonight? I'm um, feeling great. It's a little late, but... um. Yeah, we got we got a lot ahead of us. Uh, for this run, we're going to be using a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and uh, your choice of numpad uh, with the numbers zero through nine on it. Um, I'll explain the number pad later, much 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 later. Um, but I'm ready to start when everyone else is. Um, did we get a chance for the commentators to introduce themselves? We didn't pick an order. <laughs> You mm, talked uh, first, let's, mate. Let's, let's we're, so un <laughs> we're so un <laughs> we're so we're so unprepared. Go, go ahead, May. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Corva May. I ran this game, but mostly the ILs. And then, like, I ran this game a little, a couple times, and then now I just do RS. But I also <laughs> did this, so I'm here. And I'm T-Pat. Uh, I run uh, a lot of the uh, newer Pokemon uh, Switch games. Uh, this one's a bit on the back burner, but I'm excited to uh, come back to it soon because there has been a lot of route changes in the first, what, seven, eight months that it's been released. Uh, still an exci exciting fresh run in front of us. Um, and yeah, I'm Etiquette. I was mostly involved with this game when it like originally released, um, sort of like the initial routing and stuff like that. Um, but I did stick with it to see it go down to like the sub four range um, before leaving it in the hands of uh, Hulk and some of the other amazing runners. So this is this is going to be a good show. Yeah, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, I think Corv May posted a meme on her Twitter <laughs> about like uh, oh, RCS yeah? runners when the route doesn't change for like two days, and it's actually just scarily accurate. Uh, we do actually have a new route <laughs> that I'm not going to be doing today because uh, I didn't have a ton of time to prepare it since it's literally like a week old. Um, we're going to be doing still a very fast route. Um, there are categories for both English and uh, Japanese, but we're going to be playing in English today. And uh, the time will begin when I have confirmed my character's name and appearance. You're going to pick Girl 3. Girl 3? Okay. Girl 3 brings the luck. That's the classic Let's Go pick. So. I, I mean, we did just get a Diploma World Record with Girl 3, so... That's ex exactly. <laughs> and Flame Fatales is coming up in a couple of weeks anyways on August 21st. True! I feel like you're obligated to do girl I chose three. Girl one. If you're playing, if you're playing along at home, pick girl three now. Okay. So we girl didn't three. Pick a name. And for the name, there's one of our runners that has not gone through a run of this game in a very long time. Oh, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna see Corv Maze first. Either, so. Corv, I think it's Etiquette's my, run more recently <laughs> than you have. This is my so. first playthrough. I've never played this game. Before. Never ever. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. <laughs> I hope there's not an electrode IL that's going to be fun that I didn't, I'll spend too much time on. <laughs> I didn't know you were blonde. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a new look for me. She I'm asked for girl three. I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, uh, we're good on time, so uh, I'll be ready in three, two, one, go. So the beginning of this run uh, gets a little bit of criticism since it is about 20 minutes before any like super meaningful gameplay happens. Um, However, there is still some movement techniques in the very beginning that are going to, uh, you know, influence our overall time since times in the first uh, 12, 13 minutes of the game can vary by about 20 seconds based on how well you execute it. So I'm going to try to explain a lot of the techniques we're doing here today uh, as they happen. Um, the first one is going to be coming up kind of quick, and it does have a decent amount of setup to explain, so I'm going to try to explain it right now. Um, for a large portion of this early game, we're on foot. Um... And uh, the way our character stops uh, out of a run, they, they, they take a very long time to just like literally put their heel down and then just completely stop themselves. And it's a long animation. And um, they do that every time you walk into a cutscene. However, if you crouch into a cutscene, um, all the game has to do is instead stand you up. 
which is a much faster animation. So anytime we're walking into a cutscene, um, we're going to try to do that um, with a crouch. Although it won't matter once we get uh, our faster movement options, but it's very big in the beginning. And you will see this a lot through the first part of the run. And sometimes there's little visual cues on the ground that you just are going to look for once you know exactly where those cutscene triggers come into play. And since Halk has played this game, I, I swear, thousands of times, you know, exactly. <laughs> at least twice. Yeah, at, at least, least twice. twice. Yeah. At least twice. somewhere, maybe somewhere in between those two numbers. But yeah, he, he knows exactly where those cutscene triggers are going to be. So if it looks weird that he's just going to crouch and kind of walk into it, it's going to save about what what'd you say, like two seconds or so? Uh, every if you do time it perfectly, it's about one happens. second. Yeah. But it adds up. Say some settings for myself. Uh, the default camera is a little bit slow, and uh, a lot of this uh, game involves... See, that was perfect right there. That was a crouch cancel. A lot of this game involves looking around very, very quickly, and with the default camera, that's just not a possibility. <laughs> I like that you typed out my full username for this. Which, when I played these... Like, these I'm going to lose some frames for that, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I just, I I just think put May... I always just put May, and so it's like more formal. It's like my parents are mad at me. <laughs> They're using my full name. Corva, whatever your middle name is, May. <laughs> Get down here this instant. I like that because it applies my last name is May, and my first <laughs> name is Corva. That, that, that's, that's been my headcanon ever since I've known you. I mean, May is a last name, so that why, could be Why true. else would it be your username? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, I think... I'm actually going to say, like, Thomas Patrick's whole name is Thomas, <laughs> Thomas gonna Patrick. I was just going to say... That, 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 that I'm not the, quite so I'm sure. I'm the one in the call with, convenient. like, my... <laughs> actually, WX is my it. last name, so... Joke's on you. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about, like, Etiquette's name being related uh, to his name, and I was like, wait, T-Pat's literally here? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this game, besides the crouch cancels, is we need to catch all of these Pokemon, um, basically to explain to us how to catch Pokemon. Uh, there is actually tech involved with this, though. Uh, the first Pokemon catch is going to be literally nothing special at all. But then we're going to walk up to the second one, just while we're waiting for it to get in, just to optimize the movement. And then we're going to catch the second one. Then we're going to run up to the third one, we're going to try to th time a Pokeball throw. Hopefully that was good enough. I get it? Dead. No, I didn't. Okay. I couldn't ah. hear it that well. Um, basically, there's a good chance um, here in the beginning that uh, instead of just instantly breaking out like this Oshawott's been doing, uh, it'll do a very large shake in the air and then break out. And that time actually is perfectly enough time to get through the professor's dialogue after Pokemon 2, after you catch the Rowlet. Um, so that's what I was trying to do, but it is RNG at the end of the day because you can't control whether it just instantly breaks out or not. The timing's not I that strength at all. It was just whether it broke out or not. Yeah, I just didn't know it was RNG. I just assumed that was bad when I was doing this. <laughs> yeah, no. it's it's like a it's like a scripted scene. Like the third Pokemon always breaks out the first time, and there's no penalty in trying to go for the trick. So you just go for it, and you hope that it does like that big shake while you're clearing those text boxes. Uh, Shady Gamer X, another really, really good RCS runner, has theorized that um, typically when you throw a Pokemon, a Pokeball at a Pokemon's back, you backstrike it. Uh, you have a larger chance to just straight up catch it. However, because that chance is removed, it just like it's like if you get it, it just defaults to instant breakout. But that's not really been ever confirmed huh. or anything. Just head cannon. Like theoretically checkable. Theoretically checkable. You know, Anubis is kind of all over this game point. right now. Maybe maybe we can get you know, moved into the schedule. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we have some really good um, data miners that are working on this game right now. So hopefully we'll have more route optimizations coming in the future. Like, is there catch rate stuff out yet? Because that was obviously the really hype thing that just that's came out with the Let's Go right scene. Now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're working yeah. on right now. They got a... Uh, I think she got very distracted by um, my Let's Go stuff, though. Uh, Amber, if you want to you know, do our thing, uh, this is quite a, you know, I would say an ins it's an insignificant, excuse me, Yeah, this walk takes a while. 
<laughs> and some um, cutscenes after, so. Yep. I'll go ahead and uh, just uh, say some announcements as well um, that I didn't catch at, or get, didn't get out at the very beginning here. Uh, so just to remind you all, we mentioned Frame Fatales earlier. Uh, it's going to be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, from August 21st to the 27th, and that marathon schedule is now out. If you want to take a look at it, type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com forward slash frame fatales for more information. Prize submissions are open right now, so you should check the site out if you want to look into submitting one. And then speaking of marathons, uh, One and done -thon is coming up this weekend. It's going to be August 13th to the 14th. It's a marathon where you where you show off your favorite run, and that's going to be your only appearance in the One and, one and done -thon series, period. The schedule is now out as well if you use O-A-D-A-T with an exclamation mark. I'm going to go ahead and type that in chat. O-D-A-T marathon, as I like to uh, say it. You use that in Twitch chat, you'll find out more and you'll be able to take a look at the schedule link. I'm going to be in both of those. You should check out both of those marathons. Wow. You're going to yeah. be running Pokemon in those marathons. Yeah. I, I, didn't, know, I didn't realize... Yes, that's what I'm doing from one and done a thon. Because I didn't realize that you're like supposed to pick your favorite run that you want to show up the most. It's an absolute power the... move that in the marathon series you only get to do one time ever. <laughs> you picked your favorite game, Pokemon Typing Adventure. Pokemon Typing Adventure. What else would I pick? I respect the hell out of that so much. Like it's so good. <laughs> it's, to it's be fair, I probably I, I didn't even similar. submit like. Yeah, I didn't even submit like. <laughs> like the the very technical run where you just have to show off how good you are at typing. I picked the one where you don't type for half of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other one, the other one's a lot harder. That's May is one and done, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. I'm legit. I'm legit so excited for that run. <laughs> I'll be there. In the chat, not not good on chat. Anything, but I'll be there. I gotta see that live. That's going to be a run to see for sure. <laughs> I got to practice it. And then you're doing uh, Aras uh, Omega Ruby versus Alpha Sapphire with Sanjin, right? Or yeah. Flame Fatals? For Flame yeah. Fatals. What's the, what's the, the, last the what's score of that race? Because this is a rematch? One zero. For, one zero me. Okay. I don't know if I've ever lost an Oras race. True, because uh, I remember when we were at... In Marathon. Yeah, I remember when we were at Midwest Speed Fest, you beat Echi uh, in the... Uh, or ass race. Yeah, and I also did it at. Um... Wait, did I do it a, a thir another time? I feel like I've done it more than twice. Maybe that's a lie. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many times I've run or ass. I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to think if you did it for uh, one twice. of our. <laughs> I'm trying to think if you did it for one of our uh, PSR diversity marathons. Well, that's the one with Santa. All the other ones weren't races, so. <laughs> Oh no, because I, ra I raced Echi, um... <laughs> so an unofficial one. No, that a counts. W's okay. a W. Yeah. <laughs> Three and oh. My annual August 27th <laughs> Oras race. So true. Wait, wait, was that actually when? No. There's no way that's what the Midwest Speed Fest one was. That's literally prophecy. That's that's what time. That's what day uh, Midwest Speed that, Fest is this year. That sounds right. That I'm, sounds I'm right. There, it, I'm gonna be it there is this my year annual August twenty seventh Oris race. Um, so if you haven't played this game before, there's a lot of cutscenes in it. Yeah, I mean, I get it because they try to set the mood because it is like you know the first Pokemon game in like an ancient world. Uh, the ancient world of their like original games. Um, you mean so there's lore and plots in yeah. this game? Yeah, yeah, that pesky lore and plot we have to mash through. Also, the mashing in this game is not super ideal. It's um, not good because unlike Sword and Shield, that gives you like an extra button or two, or Let's Go, that gives you an extra button or two to mash. You literally only have the A and B button, so I'm having to like wiggle my finger between A and B so that one of them is held down at all times. <laughs> it's it's not... Gen Five mashing. It's yeah, but worse, it can be described as because that. you have to hold a button down, but not quite hold down a button. It's bad. It's not like it's not as bad as BDSP mashing, but uh, however, bad. don't be discouraged by that because um, we do allow turbo uh, for Legends Arceus. Actually, there's probably like I think there's a measure going on uh, to have turbo and no turbo merged. So 
so they'd be on the same board. Uh, I just prefer no turbo because there's no such thing as a good turbo controller. I've heard the control <laughs> sticks on the thought... are really bad. Like, the dead zones are terrible. Yeah. Yeah, this well, is the, the best one. Like... This uh, KMD turbo controller is the best one I've ever used. It is the closest to the uh, Switch Pro. However, there is still a little bit of dead zone on the sticks, and it's noticeable when you're trying to, like, micro-aim, so... It's, uh... I think a little bit of dead zone on the sticks honestly sounds kind of nice, though, because the Switch has zeros at, like, software dead zoning. Yeah, so you just, but when you, I'm used to I like get flick back constantly. Oh, actually, my I'm actually extremely fortunate. Uh, I don't know if it's because of how long I've had it, um, but my Pro Controller actually has no snapback. Oh my god, I wish that was me. Oh. I get so much snapback from double double inputs. There, uh, double, I can't tell. I can't tell, tell you how many uh, modded controllers that have no snapback. I can't tell you how many times I picked the wrong move in BDSP due to snapback. Okay, so that was an 11.51 Cyndaquil pick. Uh, That's pretty which good. Which is only 10 seconds off the best I've ever done, which for the first 12 minutes of the run is pretty good, especially given that we failed the breakout skip in the beginning, which is the trick we call uh, where oh, you're able to get the... Oh, should it. Aww. I have never... Actually, that's a lie. I picked Rowlet for my casual playthrough, but I have never, ever, ever done a speed run with Rowlet. <laughs> Me too, and I was disappointed when it evolved. I thought it looked cool. I do not like... I think Dart Tricks is pretty good. It's, it's okay. If you don't like the final evolution of Dark starters, Tricks, uh, you don't have to worry about that here because we'll never be seeing a Typhlosion in this run. Woo. I actually like the Typhlo Ooh, Hysidian I Typhlosion. I love Typhlosion. It's Hysidian like Typhlosion was my uh, starter in my casual file. Same. Yeah, fortunately, and it was uh, cool because in the first iterations of the speedrun, we actually picked Oshawott. Because we were thinking, hey, it's a Pokemon game. Let's just pick the water starter. Nothing can go wrong if you do that. And then we figured out that uh, Cyndaquil is actually Kashi pretty answer. good through the uh, first section of the game. But that's actually still in a little bit because we're still in tutorial, Halk. Yeah, um, something that some of you in, in the commentary booth may not have no seen before in a run is I just deposited my Pokeballs. And I've seen this before. Oh, strange. yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, so basically, um, it's it's gonna make more sense a little bit later. But for this intro section, when you're out of Pokeballs, uh, the game presumes that you have thrown all of them. And instead of letting you soft walk and be sad, uh, if you talk to your rival, they'll actually give you more Pokeballs. And they won't care where your original set of Pokeballs are. Um, so we get to basically get 20 free Pokeballs, which matters a lot for the money in this game, since the money's yeah. kind of tight in the beginning. Yeah, most of the routes up to this point, which again, probably <laughs> probably just came about like two, three weeks ago, uh, was that we would actually buy like a handful of Pokeballs just to have a decent stock through the first section of the game. And now that we can uh, trick our rival, scam our rival into giving us some extras, it's really going to help out. Nice job beating not Cynthia, by the way. Somebody mentioned, is it uh, what are the chances of finding a shiny? Um, it's funny because uh, a couple weeks ago I recorded like an any percent tutorial video and uh, I did find a shiny Shinx in like the first day and it was full odds. So I, I get to use so it. There's so many shiny rolls in this game though. To be yeah, because you see like hundreds of Pokemon in any given area or something like that. Or so it's been explained to me. It feels like it's not one in 4096 at lowest rate, but I have been told that it yeah. is. So. And you get way more rolls at higher rates too. Especially mm -hmm. in. Yeah, when that. you have research on Pokemon, it gives you higher rolls. Yeah. I and if you play the game casually, there's a there's a quest you can do for a free one. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, uh, I spent the last week in Vegas at Evo. It was fun. I had a uh, an event back in February, and we were showing our restreamers how to actually restream, but we needed someone who was streaming to like be the demo person. So we had my partner who was playing Legends Arceus just stream to one of our dummy channels. And we were in the middle of explaining to the restreamers or the volunteers how restreaming worked. And we were just like watching his feed and he just happens upon a shiny Geodude. And we all just shut up and get real quiet watching him try to catch <laughs> his Geodude. And the cheer in the Discord call, like when he caught it, like that was like his first shiny. And it was like really, really exciting for him. And... It was, it was hilarious at the time. It's like, yeah, and you you capture this screen here, and oh, sh is that a shiny? <laughs> it's yeah, a good Geodude's shiny. One it's, a, good ones. It's, a, it's a golden Geodude. Yeah. Well, it's a good one because aggro Pokemon never flee, so you don't have to worry about not being able to catch it. 
Uh, the first thing I did in this game was 100% Driftloon stack entry, which gives you more rolls. And then Driftloon is everywhere in this game at all one. times. And um, I've never seen a shiny Driftloon in this game. I have two, like, from Overworld and Sword and Shield, but I think I've, I've never seen, gotten one I think in this I've game. seen uh, shiny Driftloon in two different runs. <laughs> I have clips of them. Uh, I have at least a clip of the first one I saw. I think I, I'm pretty sure I sent it to you after I got it. Yes, I remember this. Oh, My good. earliest I shiny um, was a shiny Buizel when uh, you get Buizel explained to you, which is like 25 minutes into the game. I think T-Pet has world record for fastest shiny, though. <laughs> I, I actually remember uh, DMing you about that. I was like, oh, hey, uh, the very first Bidoof in this not tutorial area literally <laughs> spawned a shiny. And I was going to ignore it for a second, and then I went back and I caught it. And uh, we, we compared. I think I beat your fastest like shiny record by, like, it was less than that. I think it was, like, 20 was seconds. Yeah, but I've never seen a shiny that early, other than the Bleasel. The, the I mean, literal first, the liter literal, yeah, odds. literal first like non tutorial spawn was shiny. The funniest in run shiny I've seen goes to etiquette. Quite recently, the BDSP Starly. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it was right after you get Pokeballs, but I didn't realize you had Pokeballs yet, so I just ran away from. He just he just ran. <laughs> It wasn't like, it was like, I don't know, like 10 minutes into the run. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I'd catch it and then just reset. That's fine. <laughs> well, you also saw it when it was like sunset time. So all the Starlies kind of look shiny anyways. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But it also does make an effect of the shininess. Yes. Well, I, to be fair, I knew it was so. shiny. I just didn't realize it was literally like three steps after the catch tutorial where you're given Pokeballs. So I, I just didn't process that I had Pokeballs at the time. Are you, aren't you a speedrunner? Shouldn't you know these, like, when the game gives you stuff? Oh, my God. So oh you may God. be wondering why I backstruck the Shinx to initiate the battle. Uh, it is pure superstition as of right now. Uh, me and Shady <laughs> believe that initiating a battle with a backstrike increases your catch rate. We have no evidence to support this other than anecdotal. Uh, and it works way more often, <laughs> in my opinion, than just attacking it head on. Well, you know what the plural of the anecdote is, though, right? No, I don't. Data. <laughs> I was going to say, like, anecdie or something. I don't know, something silly like that. <laughs> I mean, what's the plural of onyx? Onyxes? Onyx. They're all, all Pokemon plurals are just the same thing as the original Pokemon name. I like to think it's onyx -y. What? I thought it would oh. be, like, onyx onyxes, like, in indices or whatever. Yeah. Oh... It's O, it's like O N I X I, Onyx I think it would be funny if it was that way. I hope they bring Alpha. Is Pokemon the plural of Young Goose Young Geese? It has no, to be. Uh, no, it's still Young Goose. That's according to the Pokemon Company. All plurals are just the same as the singular. I don't know about that. Yeah, but we also can't agree on like half of the Pokemon pronunciations in the first place. Yeah, what, what so, so let, let, let's, let's talk about that. What game are we playing right now? Pokemon Legends Arceus. Well, it's Arceus any, any, because, because they wanted we, to do a pun. Go, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's just because they wanted to do a pun for <laughs> Silvali. Which I fully respect. I respect retconning your pronunciation for the sake of making a joke. It's not even retconned. In the Arceus movie, I'm pretty sure they pronounced it Arceus. I'm going to have to rewatch uh, I know, that. Like, I know Mantine has been pronounced different ways like 90 different times. Yeah, Is it I've like Mantine? Mantine, Mantine. Yeah, I used to say Mantine until I got into Poke the Pokemon community, and now I say Mantine. Because everyone else does. Shout out to the Pokemon Stadium announcer saying Ekins and Ponyta. Oh, it's Ekins. The, Ponita. The, 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 Ponita. Those are new. Ponita. The, um, the one in uh, Battle Revolution has some really, really good ones like Morel. Morel. I need a I need to actually play through Battle Revolution. I've played a little bit of it, and the announcer it's is good. just like top tier. It's good. It is. It's I was, good. I, I, was, I was playing it recently. It's good. The, the, the best is when it's like Battle it Revolution couldn't handle it. Blind. It's down. It couldn't take it. It's, it's down. down. 
the Battle Revolution announcer is way too like professional for the game that it's in. Like, <laughs> I love it so much. He tries so hard. Like it just it doesn't fit the setting of the game. Fear Cole delivers chilling misery. <laughs> what? I never heard that. There's one lines before. for like so many different attacks. There are That's lines for very weird situations like like dying to recoil or Yeah. Like I I was watching you the other day and there was like a new one where I was like, there's a specific line for this specific scenario. The appearance of Groudon has caused the sun's rays to intensify. Yeah, shout out to Roger Parsons, who uh, was credited as Ken Gates throughout that, but uh, he I'm was the announcer for, for that game slander. and for the, uh, <laughs> being the original narrator for Pokemon, the anime. At least in English, but yeah. Like, just, oh my god. I want another game that's fully announced like this. It's so good. Yes. I, I just, I want a new game like Battle Revolution. I was going to say like Scarlet Gen Violet's going to come out in a couple months, but we can't even get voice acting in Pokemon games. Yeah. Any voice acting in the trailer. That's there was nice. voice acting in the trailer. Oh, wait, there was. You're not wrong. And they had to put it in really big text. It was just like voice acting does not appear in actual gameplay. I didn't see that warning for any of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon anime episodes that were literally made to promote the game. I went into Mystery Dungeon severely disappointed. <laughs> There's no voice acting in my video I, game. I, I, I missed I'm another crash cancel. Yeah. I hope that Scarlet Violet has another um, uh, musical like performance where it's not voice acted. I, I, I like Sword and Shield, but that was a questionable choice. Hey, it's it's only cool. compensated cool. that the Piers theme is the actual best theme in the game. Piers' theme so, is so good. Thank you. That was, uh, that was the most complicated crouch cancel in the game. Um, I have to uncrouch and or I have to crouch and then uncrouch to effectively like skip the recoil from movement. But I accidentally only made one Pokeball. So I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. Yeah, you don't need them. You'll yeah, be fine. so so this whole time. What are you gonna catch stuff in this? <laughs> yeah. This now, whole time that, actually, that we've right been now. like totally off uh, topic. Elk has actually been like trying to do good movement, good mashing, good crouch cancels, all that. But <laughs> yeah, we are to... about to get to like the actual gameplay portion of the actual game. Yeah, I'm it... used to the extremely cringe mashing. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> It's um, it's not even like uh, normal Pokemon games where it's like, okay, now we're we're doing stuff and it's still kind of slow, but like now we're doing some more stuff. No, this immediately ramps up. Like, mm -hmm. it it was very laid back up until now, at least in terms of like watching and trying to explain stuff. And now is when everything just sort of happens all at once. So what's gonna happen is like, oh, go ahead. So, if you know how the pacing of a like a story is supposed to go, where <laughs> T-Pat yields so that climax. they can slander the video game. No, no, no. <laughs> so you build up to a climax. I'm not slandering. You build up to mm -hmm. a climax, and then you sort of trail off after that, right? It's kind of like a like a like a bell curve. Arceus climaxes um, immediately. The amount of what you have to do in this game is like that too, where it, but instead of being like a gradual ramp, it's like a cliff. <laughs> And then it's like a like a like a Are you Mesa, trying to say my speedrun drives point. off a cliff? Because you're absolutely uh, correct. I mean, if you want, if you want to interpret it that way, it drives not, off I can't a cliff. Stop you. And then off a cliff later. Yeah. It drives up a cliff and then runs out of gas, so it falls back down. <laughs> so the non-slandering part of the game is that so we're not these are basically. <laughs> So we're essentially like in a wild area. Uh, all the Pokemon are going to spawn in the overworld, and now we have mostly free reign to explore. Uh, this is Obsidian Fieldlands, the first of five uh, wild areas or just regions, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to divide this into four different days or four different sections. But this first one ends up being one of the most technical of the uh, Obsidian Fieldland days. Uh, we're ignoring some of the Pokemon. We're going to catch a Starly here, and I think you're also going to get a Wurmple uh, before 
Nope, uh, not leveling them. Here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before uh, leveling up our way. Pokemon quite significantly, and there's the, and this is actually the uh, exact reason why we picked Cyndaquil as the starter, and unfortunately not Rowlet or Oshawott. Uh, and you'll see that in like a minute here. I will preface Oshawott this least. and uh, spoil it by saying the battle system in this game is really stupid, or the battle formula. It's rather. not. So they made a ton of changes to the battle formula in this game, which are, in theory, cool. Um, if you're not aware, you can now do agile and... Uh, strong. Strong style. Strong moves, yeah. Strong moves gain accuracy and you'll have their base power increase, but they put you on cooldown longer. I would and like to describe the moves. battle system of this game as, like, if you've ever played D&D, it's basically initiative. They've changed it to basically initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, strong well, moves so increase your initiative or make it take longer, and then agile moves decrease your initiative. Or actually, they Except increase this, and decrease your opponent, technically. Yeah, so yeah, that's the thing. It's, like, it's not technically initiative, because the way it actually works is when you hit your opponent with a, when you hit an opponent with a move, depending, it, it like, knocks them back in the initiative track a number of, like, essentially, like, points based on the speed, your speed and the move speed. And it's really weird. It's not super, like... Yeah, esoteric. It's, it's a little funky. It's, it's very esoteric. <laughs> it, uh, you get into situations where if you're ever in a fight that isn't one on one, they just take like nine turns in a row, and you're like, "Can I go, please?" Yeah, it's because uh, you're just continually getting knocked back in the initiative track. Well, uh, it's kind of a rough draft of a battle system, I'll be honest. It is kind but of that's the, not why you're playing this game. Yeah, it is kind of the opposite of Let's Go, where you can two on one the opponent. Well, in this game, there are a couple battles where they'll two on one or even three on one you. Uh, but the battle system, uh, it's actually kind of funny that we saw a Final Fantasy game uh, earlier on the GDQ stream today, because the battle system is going to look familiar to anybody who's played Final Fantasy X, is that you'll be able to see everybody's turn order, and it goes one at a time. So it's, it's live. Yeah. It lies. It does lie because it assumes that you're not picking agile or strong moves, and that includes the opponent. But well, this is really important that health gets back strikes on all of these beautiful eyes. Because when you get a back strike on an opponent, you A, go first, and B, they lose their first turn. Now, the beautiful eyes are fast enough that basically the turn order here was Cyndaquil, beautifly, beautifly, Cyndaquil. So he, he, yeah, he strayed away from the battle to cancel the battle and then ran back to this beautiful eye because its health is now right where he left off and was able to get that uh, initiative turn. Ooh, that was, uh, that was a little close Come there. Thing. Something worth Come noting uh, to get my mind off how scary that was. Uh, the beautiful eye did use Stun Spore, which is a research task for beautiful eye, which means I don't have to kill them, either any of them, with Rollout anymore. Because Rollout's inaccurate and I don't want to use it. Uh, another, another weird quirk about that, or two other weird quirks about the battle system in this game. One, there is no such thing as four times super effective anymore. It is now two and a half times super effective. I don't know why they did that. Two, if you're familiar with the same type attack bonus, that's been reduced to 25%, or 20 or 25%, I forget. I kind of don't know why. 25, yeah. And three, um, it's just, like, out-leveling doesn't really matter anymore. Like, it does, but it's it's a much smaller, per, like, uh, it has a lot lot less of an impact on the damage you're dealing. Let's just say and that so if you're using... situations where... I was going to say, let's just say you're using a level 30 and you're fighting a level 3. Uh, that, yeah, that you're not guaranteed to win that fight in a turn. Yeah. It's a, it's a reason, like, it's part of why, like, the, the battle system this game is, feels very strange in a lot of ways. Um, so, so how defeated... But the new, uh... The new status effects are very good, and I think they should they should keep those. Yeah, Frostbite and Drowsy, I think, are much, much better than Freeze and Sleep, respectively. Uh, so what you saw is Help defeated three of those high-level Beautifies. They were all level, what, like 20 or so? And we started with a level 8 Syndiquil. Well, we're, everybody in the party is basically level 15 to 18 right now. So he's doing a bunch of evolutions. And the reason we do this is... The main point of the game is to gain research points. It's more complex than just get one of each Pokemon 
Uh, so think of Let's Go Runs where you have to catch 50 Pokemon to enter Koga's Gym. That's pretty simple, but it's a, it's a nice way to frame the game through. Here, uh, you it's more than just catching one of each Pokemon. There are research tasks that's basically like a whole page of notes per Pokemon, which can include catching multiple versions, getting a male and female version, uh, defeating a Pokemon, defeating them with a certain move, seeing certain moves being done. Also, feeding the Pokemon in the overworld can count for all these research points. And in that small sequence that we just did with the Beautifly's, we were defeating them, we were defeating them with certain moves, we were seeing Ember from the Cyndaquil, and we just got a bunch of the evolution research points. Uh, and in this case, you actually get points for evolution for evolving from and evolving into. So the Wurples got evolution points for evolving them, but the Silcoons and the Cascoons also get evolution points for being evolved into as well. So we just got a bunch of research points and are able oh, to progress just through a new part of the I game. Don't, uh, that's kind of silly. I didn't. I never set up the replay buffer on the OBS uh, for GDQ, so I did not really read any of that. <laughs> oh well. Maybe somebody can get a Twitch clip. <laughs> I'll try to pay attention to the research from now on. Uh, in my own runs, um, because rec recording is required for submitting any Pokemon game, I figure that it is best to utilize that fact that you are recording to your advantage. Um, so I make like a pretty much a local Twitch clip to my computer, and I scroll through the research very quickly, and then during cutscenes I go through frame by frame to see what my research was, but I did not have the opportunity to make that, so oh well. What, one of the things you'll look for is Bidoof has a... Uh, certain research task, which is catching a large variety, and that can make a difference based on whether you have to defeat one later or not. Yeah, it's just random. It's so. just yeah, and it's random. So so it's obviously advantageous to look through the decks when it uh, when that page opens up to see if you've completed that task or not. The only gimmick with Drowsy for people that are asking in the chat, uh, Drowsy, you take more damage from uh, moves. And then you also just have the chance to not move. That's literally it. And Frostbite is burn butt for special attacks, which I think is yes. excellent. Really neat. Frostbite yeah. reduces special attack. I didn't realize that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's literally just a special burn. That is so cool. It is, it is mm -hmm. so cool. It's nice that there, there is a compliment to burn. Yeah, I was trying to figure it's out. It's interesting it was, though because sorry, I was just trying to figure out if like Frostbite did anything else in my casual playthrough and I couldn't figure it out. But yeah, go. It is interesting though because uh, like the the trade off there that they always that, that like special versus physical has that like physical is gen tends to be easier to raise but also easier to lower. So actually, or, uh, but then ha so like actually having an easy way to lower special attack, I wonder how that would affect balance. It's because like you have like intimidate and you have burn and stuff like that, but you also have like sword stance versus um, calm uh, mind. Calm mind. I mean, there's nasty there plot, like but that. it's not as widely. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used. Sword dance is like super widespread, and yeah. then pale glow um, is good at randomizers, but. <laughs> T-Pat did a great job of explaining why we were doing the evolutions earlier, but there's something I wanted to add on to it. Those were evolutions we we're going to have to do anyway, which is the big thing. So we're basically just making those evolutions and the points that come with it work for us. Uh, rather than before, the route was you go catch as many things as you can and try to satisfy as many research point conditions as you can. And uh, yeah, good luck. Um, yeah, originally hitting that first threshold, which is 500 research points, was... Kind of tight if you didn't get too many bonuses, but now with the Beautifly route and all those evolutions, you're guaranteed to get that 500 point threshold. And now it's just a matter of how much did I get above it? Mm. Yeah, it's also like worth mentioning that uh, the route is like super pretty about like what moves need to be you need to use and when at least it used to be. I don't know if it is now, but what, like, it, what it moves you have to use? <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's that's a, I figured. There's a barrier to learning what you need to do to satisfy yeah. every Pokemon. But once you learn what every, po what every Pokemon needs to be satisfied and get to rank 10, uh, it's actually extremely fun. Um, with most Pokemon games, you can sort of fix your mistakes by like, oh, wait, uh, I have to use this move instead. You cannot do that in this game. The root says that you need to use a move. You need to use the move because if you do not hit 10 research points for a... Uh, for a, a, an entry, you don't get the 100 bonus, and that's a lot. And like, the rooting's pretty tight, so. 
We don't, yeah. we don't wanna we don't wanna waste time on stuff that we don't need. Yeah, how the how the Pokedex research works is if you catch one Pokemon, it's worth twenty points. And it goes from the research levels from one to ten. And one research level is worth ten research points. So if you get to nine, that's ninety research points. But if you get to ten, you get that bonus hundred on top. So getting from nine to ten takes you from ninety to two hundred points. And that adds up and stacks up big time. So we're gonna try to be as efficient as possible with Just these. Now. Uh, <laughs> Let's get it over with. Yeah, it's <laughs> gonna bother me. Um. Oh, I, and by like, the way, we need to hit eighty-five hundred research points uh, to unlock the fifth area. And you'll see that the throughout cap. the court. Yeah, that's the hard cap because basically we need to get rank one to unlock the rest of area one and we need to get rank two to go to area two three to go to area three and five to go to area five we'll be way over the cap for levels one two three and four but we want to be just barely above that 8500 point mark for area five because if we're doing all these extra research tasks we're just wasting time doing that and that's where yeah, I... the efficiency can be really really tight when I was running this, I felt like this was the most cognitive load placed on you from any Pokemon run that I've done, for sure. Like, well, there I mean, is a lot to keep track of. I think I've had similar experiences with, like, I used to run X and Y. Um, I think some of the fights in the Elite Four can be kind of, like, feels Elite, like you're trying to do advanced Elite Force. calculus. <laughs> like, yeah, trying to read X, Y, Elite Four is hard, but the, the, the thing that's about that made this run different for me is that, um, the, like, the fight, like if you're doing like elite four fights in XY, those are very self-contained within the fight you're in. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's a lot of keeping track of things over a long period of time. Uh, I the the closest allegory I would say, or the closest, yeah, would, would be um, uh, fire red leaf green round two maybe, where you need to hit that sixty catch count in order. Yeah, to that's hit. what this run gets compared uh, to a lot. This and let's go any percent. Yeah. Um, let's go has like, let's go. I feel like. Is a bit is a bit simpler because you're generally catching, like, it's it's just a matter of like, all right, well, I know these are the things in this route, and okay, well, th this is where I'm at. What can I skip? What can I uh, what can I add? Yeah, let's go is Make very much it. like one or the other. You get toward the end, and yeah. you're just like, I either get tentacle or coughing, and. You know, that's a pretty well, it, simple either or statement. Yeah, I mean, it's like that for this game as well, but the difference is, I just. Like, you guys just have Pokemon names memorized. I have Pokemon names and all of the research associated with them in, like, the same slot in the memory. <laughs> like, because I've just, uh, I grinded That's the That's two things. That's twice the no, thing. I, just, no, I, I, I agree with Gla that. Glam Meow is a catch three, feed three Pokemon, or a catch four, uh, catch one, feed four Pokemon. Like, that's just, that's how Glam Meow exists in my mind, where, where you're talking about Tentacool and Let's Go. All you have to remember is Tentacool's name, <laughs> and that you need to catch I will it. Say the, the catching and feet it and is more to remember are, for sure. Are, <laughs> not like it isn't. Yeah, aren't aren't necessarily as bad as the one like ones that were like, oh well, make sure that you're using these moves and which normally that's fine. But if something goes weird because you get crit or something like that and you have to adjust on the fly, it's hard. This runs hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Yeah, the on the fly routing is probably the biggest part of it. Um. Oh, uh, that's a shaking tree. I can't get it. That has so, a something, it. something sees you and you're like, ah, wait, okay, how do I fix this? Yeah. Speaking of something seeing me, uh, I, we found out recently that if you do a dive while you're crouched, they only hear where you come from. They don't hear where you land. Like that. Oh, I, oh, that's I didn't, news to me. <laughs> Never mind, I, I did didn't wrong. know that, uh, that they could unsee you. Yeah, it takes a while for them to, like, lock on to you, but, um... If you don't play badly, it's not a problem. Oh, uh, well, that does it for me. <laughs> I tried. It's, well. it's much easier on uh, Weird Ear because it's so fast. Yeah. Oh, I failed. So this is, <laughs> uh, what, <laughs> this is uh, what some would call the best part of the game. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Any objections hear, to what's going to come up? Oh, this nope, is this absolutely is the, the best peak. part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> best dialogue ever. This is... This is not the best part of the so, game. So they're not Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, we get introduced to Alpha Pokemon, which do physically look much, much bigger than normal Pokemon in the overworld. It's absurd how much larger they and are. And it's so... Alpha Eevee is so powerful. <laughs> 
And it's great because the Pokemon company is just like, well, we could just put a big meme here right away. Just give us this huge alpha cricket tune as a boss battle. Well, like a small boss battle. Small big alpha boss battle. There you go. Oh, that's probably the best one. It's yeah. A, a, a mini... A, a, a mini big man, boss. Not, it's a mini big... Yeah. Luckily, nowadays with crouch canceling, aside for a handful of crouch cancels in the game, I can always identify it as, okay, that was my fault <laughs> that I missed that. There's some that are just tricky for literally no good reason. Um, but most of them are pretty consistent as long as you always do it in the same spot. I like, I like that it's called crouch canceling. I was the one that called it that because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I called it that because that's uh, a smash that's a game yeah. Really, yeah. I just started calling it that nobody objected, so that, that became the name of the thing. <laughs> It's a I, love to da I, I, I love to wave dash in Legends Arceus. I gotta find something <laughs> called wave dashing. Oh, actually, there is something I can think of. Sometimes when um when the you're uh, when you're switching from Ursaluna to Weirdir and catch them all, oh. uh, Weirdir kind of like shoots off sideways for like no reason. We can call that a wave dash. Perfect. It's a weird Ew, version. If you swap, in, in, if you swap in the air, it's a wave land. <laughs> yeah. Also, there are cool Pokemon in this game that are in not the other Pokemon games. Yeah, when people debate whether this is an actual main series Pokemon game, which, by the way, it is. You know, it Pokemon is. Company said it is. 100%. Uh, I always point to the fact that they introduced new Pokemon that are probably going to be well, in the series for a long time. Counterpoint. Pokemon Go. You think Pokemon Go, yeah. Uh, it's in Let's Go, isn't it? What? I Doesn't mean, but they added it in Go first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's but a good it, it point. It's, in Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. But this is does. there's more than one. Yeah. Are you calling learn to typing Pokemon Adventure two. not a main series anyway, game so because we didn't add any new Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> now we have defeated the Cricket soon. Uh, that's the end of our second day here. We're gonna it's get like our Pokemon back. You have to play all the side games to understand the full Pokedex. Yeah, you don't really. You think you know Pokemon lore, but you don't unless you play Pokemon Typing oh. Adventure. Like did like did anybody know that the Pokemon choose to get smaller so that we could catch them? It's not something the Pokeball does. I believe it. Is that actual? That was a, is that actual lore yeah, from the manga? Actual, yeah. No, that's from this no, game. That's from this, that's game, from this yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, that is actual text in this game. Okay. Okay. Time to start my second casual playthrough right that's now. A lot of points, good lord. Good job. Well, you finished your so, uh, Kurgatots, right? Yeah. I was worried about BDF, but I have two heavy BDF, so I'm fine. Lucky you. I every time I, I do BDFs, I never get heavy, and then every once in a while, I only get like, w like one gender, and you need at least one of each male, female. Well, it's because of things like that that me and Shady have actually changed. Uh, on the most recent iteration of the route, we've changed BD to an optional. Or to a, it's cool if you get it, but don't freak out if you don't kind of thing. My that is nice, because... My record you have is... Way I love too many BD points stress. to leave the area. Like, on a good, on an okay run, you get out of the area with like 2,100 points, which is 300 more than you need. So it, it, you're you're perfectly fine to not finish BD. My record is eight male BD and no female and no heavy. Is that a 50-50? It's 50-50. Well, my good. best record in uh, this game is um, catching 77... Catching slash defeating 77 Sneasels before I get a single Razor Claw. Well, that's it's not 50-50. An it's an 8% chance, but that's still ridiculous. Eh, yeah. That reminds but, uh, me of just, I've like, heard some silly Magnum. stories. Oh yeah, Magnemite, Magnemite? in uh, Only the Only in space-time distortions. Magnemite oh my god, Magnemite. the worst decision they made about this game is everything around the space-time distortions. Yeah. I didn't mind I the space-time distortions until I had to catch like Magnemite and a few others to clean up the Pokedex that were exclusive to these stupid distortions. The worst one is Mount, funny. Mount Coronet because there's two exclusive lines there. Yep. And, uh, isn't it I, the fossils? I, um, yeah, it's Shield on and Kranidos, and we actually call it in the speedrun community getting halked whenever you only get one line in the space <laughs> industry, because it happens to me so often. <laughs> I, 
I'm the only Believe one that walks out of there with only a Kranidos. <laughs> Believe it or not, the catch ball category actually looks fun. Minus that exact part. The space-time distortions are the worst part of catch all, but the rest of it's really, really fun. I remember when uh, when Hippie was grinding it and she was just losing her mind over space-time distortions every day. And then she got one run where it all worked out and she never came back yeah, and I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. It's still yeah. a very solid run on the leaderboards, like honestly. Like it still holds up very, very well, despite it being in like March or February. Will you coach me if I do a catch them all? Absolutely. Okay. I might need a, a let's go AOP catching uh, coaching in exchange though. Done. That is much easier. <laughs> Deal. I like that Magnemite is only in the distortions, but, Mag but Magnazone is just hanging out. Yeah, the catch them all category involves catching 240 Pokemon, every Pokemon in the game besides Darkrai and Shaman, because Darkrai and Shaman require external save data. Yeah, we never require anything that requires external save data for um Not only do the, uh, not only do the leaderboard mods not require it, but Arceus themselves just does, doesn't yeah, Arceus, require it. Uh, sorry, Arceus, I meant, um, doesn't require uh, Manaphy or Fiona either, but we include them in the category because you are very willing and able to... I don't know about willing, but you are extremely able to catch Manaphy and Fiona in this game without any external save data. They expect you to read a book in the Candlelight Library and be the SP, though. But, okay. You know, if you know the I answer, you can just I solve it. I figured that out without looking it up on the internet. I had a person in chat tell me, and it was way better, so... I, I, didn't I, 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 I was thinking about it for like a week, and I had a hint, but it was like it was more like a riddle hint. Uh, and it was actually from uh, from Etiquette's mod sheep came up with a really good hint. And it mm. took me like a week to figure it out, but I figured it out, and I I popped off because I I got it on screen I, too. Do you have a clip of that? I kind of want to see that. Yes, I do have a clip of it. Okay, I gotta see that later. Oh, um, I share. didn't either. I, um, I never played the post game of this game until my very first catch em all speed run, so I just watched Tippy's run and I saw her grab <laughs> uh, man. T uh, sorry, the three Pokemon, just for those that don't want to be spoiled. Uh, I saw her grab those three Pokemon. I'm like, okay, I don't know what she's doing with these things, but she put them in the party, so I guess I'll do that too. Um, oh, by the way, this I, is the only I, time you can crash cancel a door because this is not a door, this is a cutscene trigger. Um, they basically have just replaced the door. Because anytime it's, you crash cancel a door, it just kind of makes you like fall off of an invisible cliff. Also, that's a help at all. That guy is literally just a scam artist. If you give the him only... four point two million dollars, he'll give you as much back space as you need. I'm going to do that soon because I yeah. promised to do an RCS 100 percent for some reason. Have fun. That's a lot of. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, take, take I'm thinking there's a possibility um, because in the end game of this game, in the percent, they force you to have another slot um, because they give you an item that they don't want you to not be able to have. So they create a slot for you. I'm wondering if you can just get every other upgrade and then come uh, and then go up to that part of the end game and have that last slot created for you by the game. Which is the which is the one million dollar slot. Yeah, that's what it would be. Uh, I guess I'll bring you just in case I don't get another. I think I need two more Wurmples, but I'm bringing that other Wurmple just in case I don't get them. I think I have four right now, if I'm not mistaken. Glad Wurmples are back, because Wurmples were like, kept changing yeah, for a while. You do three, right? Evolve three, and see what you get. Uh, sometimes there was you can do evolve three, catch three, evolve two, catch six. Uh, we There's have the one, most aggro Pokemon called, in the world, um, Paris. If you're not aware with how Wurmples work, Wurmples have a hidden uh, coefficient that determines whether or not they become, evolve into a Dustox, or nope, into, into a Cascoon or a Silcoon. You got and it. It's, uh, it's yeah, just I wish random. my Wurmples evolved into Dustox. Are you kidding me? It'd <laughs> be so cool. <laughs> that was a nice Pikachu you got there. I didn't get it, but thank you. <laughs> I tried. Well, it's fine. Rub it in too bad. I, I, you know, you turned away and. Look at the Krusty Krab to use new manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little 15 of barrel. So if I somehow get like um, too many heavy B doofs, which doesn't look like it's gonna be the case, I can skip evolving B doof since I have the right level of uh, the barrel that already knows water pulse. Can can Yolo Ball catch the uh, the alpha? Yeah, you can the, catch the, the alpha. It's twice. just very unlikely. Mm -hmm. This is the only Gen 8 game I believe that does not have the level penalty. 
Uh, it does have a level penalty for catching things, but that that alpha it, it doesn't level have the sixteen. All right, well, this is a, one, a Gen 8 game, and thus has the level penalty. It, it has a level penalty, but it doesn't have the bad level penalty. The level penalty yes. is rough. Yeah, this is one of the not aware. games of all time. In Sword and Shield and BDSP, if your lead, if your Pokemon is lower level than the Pokemon you are trying to catch, you have a about 10% chance of catch, or the, the catch coefficient, the catch chance is multiplied by one-tenth. Asterisk. It's not quite that, but it's about that. It's Wait, do you have to have a poster board for the, with this information? Uh, no, I never made one for catching. But I do have the one for um, experience and for damage <laughs> across the room from me. I could hear oh, that you looked actually looked across the room. <laughs> I did, because I had to make sure it was still there. I can see the tunic box right now. You all wish you were me. For real. Um, okay, so this is not an ideal number of Veneries, but we'll make it work. Have you defeated your Psyduck yet? No, this is my lucky victim right here. Unless he wins this race for the Orenberry. I right, well, didn't. My favorite thing about this game, and the reason why I stopped running it, is, um... <laughs> is, uh, wild Pokemon rooting when you try to feed them. Oh not, like, rooting as in... Um, like r speed run rooting, rooting as in half you mean routing, R rooting, whatever routing. You mean the path binding? I'm in the routing. Oh no, camp. I missed. Okay, uh, you know what? It's uh, actually a good thing that we have that right level B barrel because I actually missed the correct level to evolve BD. <laughs> Just barely. Oh well. Uh, if you evolve BD at level 16, it misses the level up move for water poles because the barrel gets that level 15. Um, so I'd have to teach it manually. What, one thing which is really great about this game, um, they um, they got rid of like a move relearner thing, and they opted for a menu that you can just freely teach uh, previous um, moves that your Pokemon has had access to uh, from a simple menu. And I would have had to do that for Water Bowls, but I didn't catch a 15 by barrel. But it takes like 10 seconds, so I'm glad I don't have to. That's so good. The that and the non-auto level up or evolve are so yeah. good, honestly. The move system was probably one of my favorite things about this game. Mm -hmm. All the life nice. stuff in this game is quite good. Um, if I just had regular battles, it'd be like... I know. No notes. Although flawless. if they had regular battles, I mean... You won't... Spoiler, I, I you understand. only do like... And battles in the yeah. entire Well, I understand why they didn't do it, because I feel like their worry was that it would be a bit too slow. Yeah. But then if you think about regular Pokemon, regular Pokemon is pretty slow. I thought their concern was that the battle oh. system sucked. So they didn't and want you to have to do too much. <laughs> and reg oh, and reg oh, I thought I was about if they just kept regular Pokemon. I feel like they're concerned oh, that that okay. be a little bit too slow. But it is cool that they use this as like, it's cool that they're trying new stuff. Like. We're, we're kind of railing on the battle system, but I do like that they're trying new things. The battle system has a lot um, of problems, but it, yes. I like the whole agile, strong. I like, um, I, I personally, might be a hot take, but I like that this game requires you to run a full team rather than just uh, just sweeping the game with one single Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I, I do find that aspect of Pokemon speedrun kind of boring. Um, so it's a welcome change. As we'll see in the later fights when a lot of our opponent trainers will have more than one Pokemon, if they have like five, we too will bring a team of five and essentially be like, I'll KO your Pokemon, and then they'll KO us, and then we'll KO the next one, and they'll KO yeah, us. Yeah, I call and it go wipe back swapping, and forth. like where you're just constantly just wiping the other Pokemon, like just back and forth, because like in traditional, in the older Pokemon games, uh, when you defeat a Pokemon in one turn, uh, when the next Pokemon comes out, it's a complete reset, and the turn order stays where it was. Um, but in this game, they give uh, incoming Pokemon more of an advantage. So Which I do, I do like that change. But uh, yeah, there are just other things of the battle mechanic that was uh, funky, namely the yeah, I'd namely be... agile style is weird. Agile style sounds like you should go faster on your next initiative. But it actually slows down the opponent, and that's really funky in those multi battles. Yeah, the way they, they, they the way they did it, where where you don't go, you 
if they just made it a regular cooldown system and then just showed you the turns you have on cooldown, it would have been so much better because it would have avoided the problems of nine things attacking you and you just keep getting bumped back in the initiative track. Um, but they didn't do that, so I would be surprised if they kept this for Scarlet and Violet, though. Especially given, like, VGC and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, when I say there's a lot of problems with this battle system, I do mean from, like, a competitive sense. Like, I can't imagine this going over well with the VGC players. <laughs> like, there's oh, yeah, so no. much wrong with it. It, it doesn't um, but they work did for this game, but it works, rocks. like, in quotes <laughs> for this game. Yeah. They did change Stealth Rocks to just uh, de chip or damage over time, which I think is good. Yeah, Spikes also. Because three Stealth Rock. Yeah, I liked that change as well to those moves. Like, there's a lot of changes in this battle system that, like, are very just indica indicative that it's a single-player game and that there's no multiplayer or anything yes. like that. I think that's the reason why there's so many drastic and at times kind of problematic changes. But yeah, like, this, this game... I actually really liked a lot of the battle system, but yeah, there were things that were just raising question marks like, why is this like this? Why is this function or why doesn't this function? Hot take, I think I think Samurott's ceaseless edge is probably the best uh, like signature move because it does damage and sets up spikes. And it has a 50% crit ratio when 50% uh, <laughs> crit rate when used in strong style. <sighs> so broken and it's so cool. Uh, Chrysalia's signature move is. Oh, kind Lunar Blessing's oh, well, Lunar Blessing's yeah. broken. <laughs> the moment you said Chrysalia, it clicked. Like, yep, yep, Lunar Blessing. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's dumb. That actually used to be our strategy for beating uh, one of the major and uh, post game boss fights, for, just to avoid spoilers. Um, but we, Shady, uh, Shady Gamer X actually ratted out something way better that involves uh, a certain alpha you can catch later on in the game. Oh, one thing that they could get rid of forever, and I would never complain if it never got re added back, is um, Obscure and Fog. Oh, oh, yeah, forget it. Yeah, mm. I'm over it. I've just had, just, just I have, throw them um, in the trash. I have clips of, uh, <laughs> of doing this next fight, and like literally right before it was my turn, it changed to Fog. Yeah, because the, so, the weather can change <laughs> mid-battle, um, and mm. obviously... Which is cool. You know, things like rain and sun, like they do things in battle, and Fog does too. Be really bad. Um, so, fog, sounds like you need it. Sounds like you need a meteorologist to be able to tell when the weather is going to change mid battle please, on you. Just saying, please. <laughs> the wild thing oh, about God. that. All right, we're is doing that, <laughs> Nice. They changed um, in BDS. So Gen Four has the famous fog group, right? Where yep. all the battles there are six percent accuracy. And in BDSP, they changed it to just be Misty Train. Oh, sorry. But it's in this game, way. they brought fog back. It's funny because in BDSP, it's literally the opposite fog. It's it's accurate in battle, but you literally can't see through the fog in the overworld. Yeah. And it's the opposite in the original games. And yeah, they brought it back here. It is really weird that like the weather can change mid battle. So it is a strategy in the catch them all category to stall out weather in battle. Literally, you just wait for the weather to change. Now, nowadays in catch them all, we run like a, a secondary timer, like W split or something on the side. And we try to keep it manually up to date with uh, where, how long we've spent on the distortion timer, we call it. So, like, the distortions in this game spawn in intervals of 5, 10, 15, 25, and 40 minutes. So if you're between 15 and 25, and, like, the weather just spawns and it's going to change in five minutes, it's not worth sitting in a battle for 15 minutes just to wait for the battle, or wait for the thing to go away. Like, you can just ride that out on the distortion timer. Because it'll only block your distortion if one tries to spawn. So at that 25 minute mark, if there's bad weather coming up, if there's bad weather active and it tries to spawn a distortion, it'll just reset your timer. That's the only really, worry with it. Really is a mix of some really good ideas and some really other ideas. And some, some good some ideas, really ideas that ideas. I handle badly. <laughs> we, we got tested uh, right before we came on. The weather that blocks distortions oh. are uh, thunderstorm, blizzard, and drought. Does um the, the poison rain not? Poison rain, what? There's a new weather condition. Like, what's it called? I'm Does it have poison rain? No, this is a thing. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking weather. about. Weather. Does snow block it? Uh, the blizzard does. The intent, the snowstorm. Snowstorm, thunderstorm, and intense sun or drought is what it's called. 
Hey, we have a noble battle. We should talk about this. Hey, yeah, Cleavor. <laughs> um, this is the new evolution of Scyther. Uh, evolves with using a black augurite on it, like an evolution stone. Um, did I dream actual... this poison rain condition? I think yes, you did. Sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm being trolled. So, so Cleaver has two attacks. It has charge and swipe at you, and it has like this whirlwind attack. <laughs> it has charge and, and swipe also at no you. Al <laughs> also notice that um, we're not using other Pokemon. We are literally just throwing its favorite food at its face, and we're already halfway done. And how did this really down. interest? He really did this really interesting trick where, like, if you stand right by like this rock angle, he like can't hit you from this angle. So he didn't take damage from that. You did that perfectly twice, by the way. Pretty much a perfect. Yeah, Another done. small optimization is in the middle of the battle. Um, once you get the noble down to about half health, um, or past half health, the next sort of time that they would attack, they'll do this sort of roar in the sky, and they are immune during that time. Um, and so one of the things you'll see Hulk do is he'll aim up at the sky, um, because the bombs take a certain amount of time to come back down. And so the objective is to get as many in the sky as you can for when the hitbox comes back in, or when the immunity sort of goes yeah, away. Yeah, we're just so, stalling out the invincibility, basically. Yeah, it ends up saving, like, a second each time you do it. Actually, for, like, there's a way that you can redo these in the post game, and we have, like, IL leaderboards for them. Um, and it actually, you know, because each one's about a minute, you know, it ends up saving a significant chunk of time if you don't do it. Oh, uh, one of these nobles in this run, we're going to try to not get that roar at all. So hopefully I can get that. There was a strategy concocted for the final noble. Where you never possible ever see the brain. roar. I've gotten close. I've gotten in like that last sliver. But yeah, the, the fun thing okay. about this game is that the like the five ride Pokemon and the five nobles that we'll see are all unique to Legends Arceus. There's five new evolutions and there's five Hisuian variants. Uh, that are the ride and the noble Pokemon, respectively. That's a lot of points. But yeah, that's area one. 102 uh, Obsidian is really, really good. So this run's going pretty good so far. It's possible I, I, I like mixed up Gen 4's Acid Rain glitch with something I saw on Serebii pre-release. And so I don't know where I, well, I, I, I don't know. So I mean, I'm down to just, just call say, Fog like Acid Rain because it's just as fun yeah. to deal with. It's, uh, acid Rain would be more pleasant. So <laughs> to, to try and figure out this whole acid rain thing, I did look up the weathers in Legends Arceus. So I did know, so obviously fog reduces accuracy. Um, one of the changes they made is sunlight no longer like increases damage for fire moves. It, yeah. it instead like ups the speed of grass type Pokemon, which is kind of cool. It's sort of like a built-in chlorophyll ability. I didn't know, apparently snow, which is like, they don't have hail anymore. They just have like the snow does three things. It does increases the speed of Ice-type Pokemon, so it's like Slush Rush. Pokemon are more likely to be inflicted with Frostbite moves. And Pokemon are less likely to use a move if they're drowsy. They, like, busted Whoa. stuff. <laughs> well, that's because Ice is, like, the worst type. It really so is. It's, it's but... It needed something. Ice types moving faster in snow has been a thing since Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, I believe, or even in Blue Rescue Team. So it's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's like exactly where they got it ability. from. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that was introduced, though. Slush Rush. Yeah. Sounds like Gen 6. Or Gen 5. Why is it, it all the PMD five. runners are good at this game? Which ones? Oh, PMD runners. <laughs> yeah, the top two uh, RS trainers are for PMD. I don't know. It, it's probably something with the adaptable nature of the game, like where you're uh, having to like make on-the-fly decisions like that you know, have major implications. Um, is, RC, is Legends of RCS a roguelike? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then there's that part too. So. What are all the what are all the uh, the mystery dungeon runners gonna gonna the, get? Oh yeah, yeah, true. This this, uh, this game has a bunch of story beats from PMD also. And what are they, what are all the mystery dungeon runners gonna use the roguelike skills to uh, get the world record in in a Max Adventures? Dynamax Adventures. I'd only actually own the DLC for Sword and Shield. Oh, it's, it's good. It's I actually the best part of the game. The best part? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> good. Like, Dark Tundra slaps. I'm not lying about that. Dynamax Adventures is so fun. I bought it on eBay for like $30 and I had a good time. That's uh, it's as deep as I'm wanting to get into Sword and Shield. <laughs> Maybe I'll get the DLC someday. I don't know. 
Okay, I need to come over here and change my party. I forgot to do it earlier. Um, I'm gonna bring it. Oh, that's a really high level Shinx. Oh my god. Okay. Nice level six. It can be as low as three. Thank you. All right, now we gotta get all 50 wisps. Oh, no, there's more. How many there's 107. <laughs> whatever. Something. Felt like two mm. million sometimes. I the wisps were fun <laughs> until the they last. were. <laughs> they, they were fun until you had one left in the area, and you're like, I thought I looked everywhere. I think the so last. Like I, I think the last one I got was in one of the, like the underground ice caves. In area five. Oh my god, those were, yeah. Because my strat, my strat like, was to fly around the region at night when they're more visible, and it's like I got yeah. them all. So what 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 I recommend doing if you haven't done them all, um, the ones that are visible and like above ground, you can fly to the edge of the map, and then when you're at the edge of the map, everything gets fogged over, but you can still see the lights through them at night. Okay, hold that thought. We're gonna talk to my best friend Ginter. Um, Ginter uh, is a salesman here with the Ginkgo Guild. And he sells random items, and some of which can be great balls, which we don't have access to make yet. And we can't uh, confirm that he stole any of these items. Yeah, he goes around and collects the satchels that uh, people have, and it's like, oh, this might have this item in it. Um, but yeah, we know where he got it from. Oh yeah, I think it's four, actually. There we go. Those are some random assortment of berries and supplies that you bought there. I wonder what use they will be. Well, you gotta you gotta buy all the herbs to lower your Pokemon's friendship so you don't have to turn around. True, true. BDSP moment. Do you have the friendship mechanic poster still? But I don't think I she has a way to show that. Poster? Yes, you did for the glitch run. Is that a friendship poster? Oh, the like <laughs> thanks for donating. Yeah, one? yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's somewhere. Uh, I those were, were actually like kind of those are pretty mid tier items from Ginter actually. Like I would have wanted like um like that like he can just sell Hopa berries and like everything he sells is half price than if you were to just buy it or can cr or craft it yourself, which is the insane part about Ginter. Um, and he's gonna have new and a new inventory every time we uh, since his shop was updated when we catch twenty Pokemon and report it back to the professor. 20, 20 individual Pokemon, not like species or anything. Raspberries are pretty good, though. Yeah, that's why I bought them. Yeah. All right, so with, with Shinx, uh, we're going to want to do three quick attacks throughout this run. And this is a fight we want to lose. So we figured on these fights to, that you're playing to lose anyway. Uh, it's best to... He's setting up on me. Okay. You know I'm a level six Shinx, I, uh... right? <laughs> this isn't... Okay. I thought you bought the raspberries specifically because they were bad. Interesting. Oh, oh yeah. I thought you were going to get the three. Oh, my God. He misses it. He missed it. Oh, no. You're getting trolled so this bad is, by this and I can't even get my Oh, oh my God. Such a slow fight. Oh, no. You died. <laughs> oh, no. I oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, your rival looks happy. How do you pronounce his name? Is it... Ray. Ray. Ray? I say Ray. Ray. There's no voice acting, so there's no way to know for sure. I mean, there are... Oh, actually, uh, I do want to promote this, even though I'm not sponsored at all. You should watch the Hisui and Snow series that Pokemon's been putting out. It's really, really cool. It's so like good. It I've been meaning Didn't to they just announce watch it. another thing? Now's probably a good time, Amber, since like they've already put out like, four episodes, or three episodes. You can kind of like binge it. And they're not very long. It's only take like an hour or two to get through. Yeah, I'm kind of it was the plan. And then they're also releasing that new RCS Chronicles series. Uh, yeah, that's yep. when I saw that, on Twitter. That mm -hmm. uh, I think it comes out on Netflix next month. Oh, I'm we're really we're uh, can't get me. We're we're required uh, to interact with that wisp in the beginning. We have no choice around it. And they're just teaching us about the wisps. Hal just uh, made stealth sprays, which will be the most important item of the whole run. By the way. When I ran this, we did not do stealth sprays, and then I saw... Oh my god, I'm throwing. ...them do stuff with... You good? <laughs> and then I saw them... Uh, <laughs> I, I got, like, so frustrated with breakouts and things noticing me, me losing research points for it. I'm like, I'm done with the stupid game, yeah. moving on. And then um, I, I was watching people do it with stealth sprays, and I'm like... Yeah, this oh, really this solves seems all better. of your problems. This, yeah, yeah. Yes. basically... This seems so much good. better. Pokemon, Pokemon can either hear you um, if you're like running around near them, or they can see you 
Um, obviously, if you go in their line of sight, stealth rays makes it so you don't make any sound, essentially. Um, so they can still I see question. you, but they they won't turn around if you run past them. Even it on helps weird, you bat see you. Even on the big, yes. like bolsterous, <laughs> noisy deer, they cannot hear you, which is insane. It makes the uh, biggest the difference. The record is three forty five forty two by me. Yeah, it makes a huge difference in the run, especially in the later areas where you have more and more uh, like aggressive and aggroing Pokemon. Uh, it just they just like never hear you, and you can get right up behind them and catch them quite easily. Yeah, it's really nice. And I was kind of skeptical at first. I'm like, Shady, this is gonna take a long time to buy. Like, why do we need to do this? Because I never used them in my casual playthrough, so I had no idea what they really did. And I saw him using them. I'm like, oh my god, this is busted. <laughs> I didn't they, use anything in my casual playthrough. Yeah, same. I, I ran places and I threw feather balls. That's how I played this game. <laughs> I think I feather tried balls are so bad. Like they no, actually have they fly a, farther. Well, yeah, they have a 0.75 modifier balls, on any likes. on anything. All right. On anything that's not like flying in the sky, it has a negative <laughs> modifier on it. <laughs> Counterpoint: They look amazing. They do look One. cool. Two, they like fly in a straight line, and I have depth perception issues. Three, they're great thus, for the, they're they're great for breaking the shields on the genies. Exactly, that's fantastic. exactly what I used them for. <laughs> I was just about to say the only time that I ever used spell sprays uh, was for Enamorous, the last genie, and it still didn't even work for me. So I just started okay. chucking balls, and I got oh. the like jet um, balls or feather balls to finally break its shield. I think I want you. I forgot, um, I forgot I more everything. geodudes. Oh well. Good jet balls. You can get geodudes in this area. Oh, so that's a stunning item. Um, it stuns them. and So if they're aggressive, you can throw stun, stunning items at them. Ooh, and they, nice. like, after a certain amount of stun damage or whatever, they'll become unaggressive and stunned for a bit, and then you can catch them without having to go into a fight. Uh, the reason why you do, um, do it is because some uh, Pokemon have research for stunning. Yeah, and it's worth noting all of the items that can stun are completely random drops. Um, yep. So we, you know, are doing things to make sure we get more of them. So like spoiled apricorns come from apricorn trees. Um, you get mud balls for catching certain Pokemon. Um, so we're... We'll get a lot more yeah. when we're able to get the little, like, hay bales. Those yes. tend to have a lot of them in them. Um, but yeah, you're kind of at the mercy of the game, uh, giving you the right stun item. Sometimes you can get here and you've got like 14, and sometimes you can get here and you got like two. So I had a good number. Six is pretty good. It, it gets really frustrating when you are very low on stun items because there are a few Pokemon uh, in Area Four uh, that's going to be somewhere in the realm of like close to required to have enough stun items for. Uh, but it definitely influences the routing. Not rooting, routing. Uh, for that section of the game. One of the fights that we have to win, and I'm really glad you didn't get crit, because... I'm really glad I didn't getting... get crit, too. That's what cost me a minute in my world record, essentially. Really, really sucks when you get crit on that fight, and there's nothing you can do about it, either. Yeah, so in my record, I lost a minute to the Earth's Luna fight because I had to use a weakened B-Barrel, because B-Barrel was weakened because Staravia got crit on this fight, and I chose to send out B-Barrel uh, to take out the Toxicur. But the, to but the Toxicur got another turn for some reason, so it weakened the B-Barrel, and it was just a terrible, terrible nightmare. <laughs> um, yeah, we're done with that. We need to uh, return the Wall Fragment to the Slaceon Ruins. I like and that this that, game is like like in the past, but the Slaceon Ruins are still the Slaceon Ruins, so <laughs> there's more, there's more past that we can go to. Yeah. That's how history works. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Um, my favorite thing to do in, this game, in these runs is to forget to do this, and then run all the way to Ursulina <laughs> and be like, where, where is she? What? I think I did that in the catch mall run recently, actually. It's so catch easy, mall, especially when we uh, used to warp back afterwards. Mm -hmm. Also, you used to warp catch back gaslies, now. but oh yeah, okay, I missed yeah, that. before the strat before like when I started running is you'd like run out of here and do a wall run to the left and then like go yeah, through I mean, the yeah. boggy area. But now you just warp back to camp and go straight to the cricketing area. Also, not I gonna lie, the, the I running that's like my favorite part is that little running section. 
Area 2 is kind of the worst area. It's the hardest area in the game, in my opinion. Oh, uh, Cobalt's catching up, but uh, yeah, this area is still the hardest right I now. I hate hip catching Hippopotas. I hate catching Hippopotas. They, yeah. well, we only have to catch like three right now. And uh, stealth sprays make that infinitely better because they don't like do that. Yeah, that's true. I bet it's not as bad anymore. As, as you'll see, it used to be the worst. As you'll see in a oh. bit with the Hippopotas is that they have a <laughs> herd aggro mentality. So when one gets angry they all get angry and that's the frustrating part yeah and sometimes the the hip the hippopotas will get angry because like their friends started eating something like they just like get right angry for no reason sometimes yeah the the best i could figure out for them is to feed each hippopotas once because the moment you throw a second like another one gets jealous and then they all just start going angry Aren't you tired of being nice? Uh, I know. Uh, these Cricketunes are actually very high level. They're like level 43, as you just saw. Uh, so they are worth a decent amount of experience. Oh, there's bears here. Yeah, speaking of bears mentality, by the way, for these bears. Yeah, that too. I'm having and a guess, moment right and, now where y'all were saying hippopotas, and I'm like, it's not hippopotas? It's hippopotas. hippopotas yeah. It's hippopotas. I learned, I, yeah. I learned that from uh, PBR as well. I learned what? that from the 3DS Pokedex app thing. Yeah, 3DS Pokedex app teaches you a lot, like Ferrothorn. Yeah, it's Ferrothorn. Yeah. I'm gonna reject that reality and I'm replace sorry. it with my own. I'm learning <laughs> so much right now. You didn't know about Ferrothorn? Yeah. The official pronunciation is Ferrothorn and Ferrothorn. Oh, have you ever that, caught that the? Have you ever caught the giant? Chances. I think I caught it once. All right, we're good now. You just go. Think about run, the static I run catch them all more recently than any percent, like as a consistent like speed game. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit mixed up with like <laughs> catch them all and uh, any percent movement. But it's not it's not a major deal right now, so we're fine. I was gonna say, it my, is for uh, Thorn Teague. That's what it is. You, are you calling Game Freak liars on their own game? I think my favorite Alpha is Alpha Zubat. Because the Alpha. My favorite Alpha is Alpha Driftwind. Well, the Alphas have red eyes, but Zubat doesn't have eyes. So it's just a really True. big that is, Zubat. It's, it's, the, it's the hardest alpha. alpha to tell that it is an Alpha for sure. Alpha um, Eevee is also really good because it's just a really big Eevee. It's so big. Oh, God. And he, like, Alpha Sylveon is like the one and a half times taller than Akari. It's so much. Okay, they're angry. Yep, there goes one. Uh, Alpha. Do you still Cell Spray? Uh, yeah. I guess I'm personally a fan <laughs> of the Alpha Spirit Tomb because it's just really funny with eyes. Yeah, it is really good. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Oh, you may have just seen that Hulk just kind of like looked like he like paused and was like waiting for something. Uh, whatever you do in the overworld, whether it's like catching or farming berries from trees or getting ore or resources, if you enter a cutscene trigger before, say, like a Pokemon is caught, it will just automatically break out. You just lose everything that you were doing once the cutscene trigger is triggered. So he was literally waiting for some of the Hippopotas to oh, get in off. the Pokeball before Thanks, he activated this cutscene. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah, the Salisbury wears off in battle and it's kind of jarring. I like that when Ursaluna is his Gatchile and it pogs at you. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> like, it looks like it's pogging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I brought the wrong the barrel. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, oh, no. I was talking about uh, I need to bring the other one, the one that was level 15 that I caught. That um, had but it's water okay pulse. because um, we lowered our Ursula's defense, so this will hurt a lot more than it would otherwise. Yeah, it's worth mentioning this game sort of combines in terms of like stat up stat downs it combines physical and special um stats so if you use something like calm mind it actually boosts both your like physical and special attack and physical and special defense um so acid spray even though it normally just lowers special defense it actually lowers both of them um and 
as you can just see, it also will wear off. So um, it's not like a permanent decrease. It's just for, I think it's like three turns or something weird like that. Mm. I think it's also influenced by Agile Strong Style. Like I think yes. Strong Style, you know, defense drops last longer than uh, Agile Style. I believe that is true if it's a status move. If it's just the secondary effect of a move, I think it's the same, but I might be wrong. That makes sense. In my casual play, I really abused a uh, Swords Dance uh, Close Combat uh, Scyther. I would just Agile Style the Swords Dance and just do 50% more damage. I think that's it. <laughs> that was a little bit silly. Thank, thank goodness for the Badoos in my party. Yeah, heavy water, the heavy real, water the pulse real really, really champion. helps. <laughs> yeah, uh, strong style poison sting is 100% poison. Are you going to get the backup now we Geodude? have another plate. Uh, no, I'll just go without you, dude. I have plenty of points. Okay. Might be a little bit tighter, but we'll, we'll, we'll make you. Especially at the time I just lost to Ursuluna, I don't want to waste any more time. Do you still track your Pokedex entries, like, in total? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at them slowly, like, after the area. I don't have another way to, like, make a replay buffer right now. It's one of the be one of the beginner tools that we learned when we were going through is to get to that 8500 uh, point total. Like the good rule of thumb is that we'll have about 39 completed dex entries. So the routes was usually crafted over like, OK, here's like a base 39. And if you get a bunch of extras, you might be able to get 38. Uh, but if you get very few extras, you might have to go all the way to 40. So it's obviously very fluid. I was just wondering if you were tracking that. I did catch more Geodude. I caught a Geodude, but I need to catch three. So it wasn't enough, unfortunately. I only saw one more. Like, I guess the way I took was not <laughs> very good. I don't know. But there's plenty. There's plenty of Pokemon, so we're going to be fine. So, um... We've now been introduced to the unknown. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, for um, extra points, I could have talked to the professor after turning in the wall fragment, and that would have spawned the unknowns into the world a little bit sooner. And there's actually a no an unknown, um, an unknown uh, right where you'd fight our Saluna. So it's just a free 20 points if you go there. You can always grab the one later, too. Yeah, actually, Come no, we don't, we don't go for the Clefairy anymore. The fairies are bad. Well, there's one by uh, Pal uh, Palina. Is there? I, I believe oh, you, like, you jump off because the edge. I, yeah, you I didn't, just jump uh, off the edge behind there and you toss it in the, in the way down and then teleport back again. Yeah. There's an unknown on out. the on the volcano too. Wait, that'd be the biggest swag strat. I know. <laughs> it'd be so cool. <laughs> Hop off the Root edge. that in. Throw it in and then teleport before you hit the ground. I, I jump off cliffs to to be aggro a lot, but never to like catch something. In it. Just, <laughs> You're just like trying to, try to follow me drown. now, you aggroed Pokemon. Just well, the problem is you can't just, um, you can't throw a Pokemon in the air, life. so unless you're on uh, Basket Legion. Yeah, but where's the risk if you off. just where's the risk if you're jumping off a of cliffs but you have an ability to swim? But you don't at that point. Yeah, that's why that's the swag strat. Yeah. Uh, my see. worst, my worst marathon run so far has been three fifty-five. So that's what I set my estimate at. Well, the average time across everyone really depends. Because I know people who complete it one hundred percent at every entry before crossing the bridge in uh, Fieldlands. I know people who've done that too. So, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, I would consider them an outlier, but. <laughs> My current best time in this game is a 4.09, uh, but I haven't done the newest iteration, maybe newest two iterations of the route. I'm excited. Best time was like a, like a 4.42, but it was like a super old route that I screwed up, so. Etiquette's in the sub-4 club. Yeah. I have a 3.57, I think. That's what I'm going to set my goal time to when I come back to this game. 
356. Scarf and four mud balls. Oh my god. I need to kill that. Oops. Oh, there's another one over here, yeah? I love that Psyduck was taking a nap and it heard you, so it had to get up real quick. I hate these Tangles. These Tangles are... They exist. They're one of, they're one of the Pokemon of all time. Hey, okay, chat, you say four hours sounds about right for a post-Gen 5 game, but it's kind of half and half, right? Because, like, you have you have XY, which is, like, 340, and then you have Oras, which nice. is, like, 255, and then you have... Gen 7, which is long, and then you have... What do you mean Let's Go is not that long? Let's Go, which is like three hours. <laughs> two, Bug 3, some two, might even two, say. 259, some, some would say. say. I mean, uh, And then you have Sword and Shield, which is like four and change, and you have this, which is like 345, so... This runs all over the place. This, runs this about is like, to go, yeah, uh, this is par for the course. This runs about to go uh, down like three minutes. <laughs> With the new, I was I was three minutes ahead of my PB like a couple weeks ago on a run that didn't have the new strats, and then uh, I made some mistakes and it didn't work out. But I, I don't think the record's completely unbeatable right now. I kind of what are the new the what are the new going. strats for for this area you're mentioning? Uh, I don't think there's anything new in this area in particular. Um, in the next area, um, we introduce uh, Tentacool, um, and there's uh, some new end game strats that involve catching a really high level Haunter. And uh, just basically just skipping the catches in Alabaster Icelands. Yeah, you nothing feels nothing nice. feels worse than getting to that Alpha Sneasel, having an 88% catch or something, and then it breaking out. And you're like, well, that was my last high-level ball. Yeah, the Coronet Sneasels around the lake and uh, Coronet are actually pretty easy to catch, surprisingly, despite their level. Because they are, at the end of the day, still Sneasels. <laughs> Alright, so this is the part of the game where we antagonize a bunch of Rhyhorns. For no reason, reason completely yeah, unprovoked. Sure, it's sure so no. fun. I'm, this is actually the best part of the run. Where you just walk up to a bunch of Rhyhorns and throw it's mud at them. I hope that gets in. That was my last ball. Cool. Nice. Wait, did I only catch one? You only caught... <laughs> One. You only caught one, yeah. I'm so gonna you have go to back stun, and stun you have to another stun. one. Yeah, you have to stun so I, I four. I saw that uh, the right horn like infographic pop one the last one. That only pops up when you catch something for the first time. Well, you did <laughs> throw pokeballs at the first two, and then the heavy ball in the last one. Two breaking out is quite an anomaly, actually. Normally, I expect to catch two, and then the fourth one or the third one breaking out is like, oh well, you know, can't win them all. But Honestly, it's almost, a right like a I'm right horn breakout. Um, I'm, I'm also the person that can have all three of the Badoos break out when that's not really legal yeah. at all. Yeah, no. I was gonna say the Rhyhorn's breaking out in this game is about as bad as Rhyhorn's breaking out in Let's Go. These leaf tiles are what I mentioned before. They'll have they'll have spoiled apricorns in them a lot of the time. Mm. There are ways yeah, to farm is... some uh, some stun items in the post game, but you know that is the post game, so you don't have access to that. Also, T-Pat, in order for Rhyhorns to break out in Let's Go, they have to actually spawn. <laughs> true. Spinning. So true. You know, I completely missed the part where you did Which the part? cleaver battle. The, <laughs> the cleaver battle. <laughs> That was like half an hour ago, but we're. I know we're my brain like, I know my brain totally didn't process the entire chunk of it. I don't know why. I was just like, wait, how are we have Lil? How are we have Lilligan? Yeah, this is the noble number two, uh, Hasuian Lilligan. This is the easiest one. This one's the easiest one. Um, there's nothing too special. She likes to like jump and drop kick. Uh, pretty easy to just roll dodge. Yeah, there's like small optimizations that you can make in order to like get throws off when she's in the air and stuff, but as a whole, there's nothing super technical about this fight. I would yeah, say. the IL runners like back walk out of the splash radius of yeah. her landing. It's too complicated for an any percent club like me. The IL traps in this game, like a lot of them you don't really want to do in Is runs because good? like the penalty for um Screwing up is a lot more punishing than the time that you would save, essentially. And it's very, they're all very tight. Uh, this best is brought to you by, I ran the electrode one for a very 
for a, a long, a good while, and then uh, they, it has been much more optimized since I stopped running it. You'll you'll also notice if you've ever done uh, ILs versus just a regular run of the game is that there's more health uh, in the there's ILs. Eight more health in the post game. Yeah. Yes. So, so each bar has two more pips. Yeah, so, you, so it feels actually pretty good to like go from IL to any percent. You're like, wow, I did that so good. I bet I beat my record. It's like, yeah, I bet you did. It's, it's so jarring for Electrode because any percent Electrode is so easy mm -hmm. compared to post-game Electrode because the timing on post-game Electrode to get the... Um, oh, bye, Hulk. <laughs> bye, Hulk. Uh, the timing on post-game Electrode to, to get the good cycle is extremely tight. And... It's pretty free at any percent. It's honestly. very free in any percent. If you know what you're doing. My, my favorite thing about the Electrode one was like, nobody was really doing ILs in May post at a time. And like in the Discord, and I posted one that was like maybe a second faster or something. And then I came back a day later and it was seven seconds faster. I was <laughs> yeah, like, well, what you happened? Beat my I was like, I'm doing ILs. I have much to do ILs. And then I was like, may I beat your time? And then I did like 400 more attempts because absolutely not. <laughs> And then people got really good, and I was like, okay, well. They're very good. I love that. Uh, what it, got, it got to the point where, like, my mashing of throwing it was becoming a problem, and I was like, this is a level of optimization of this that I simply cannot keep up with. <laughs> One of my friends who was playing this game casually was having a hard time with Electrode, and I was like, just do the speedrunning strat. Just literally get in its face and chuck bombs at it. And it's like, no, that's going to be too hard. And, and then she tried it. She's like, this was well, the easiest one. So I I think Electrode is the best one to do ILs of because the way that it works out is super, like, technical and, like, uh, rewarding. But I think it's the worst one casually because if you get hit by the big explosion, you just lose. Yeah. You pretty much can't win because of how the homing orbs work. Yeah, I was gonna say it's um, a pretty like unintuitive fight. We'll we'll talk about it when we get there, but it's a pretty unintuitive yeah. fight. Like the best way to do it is to just like eat the attacks, basically. It, it, it's it's not my favorite. Casually, it's not my favorite one, but it is such a good IL. Boo! Ginther had bad items. Uh, he, actually, he didn't refresh his shop. <laughs> so where, that's probably why he had I bad items. Yeah. <laughs> Where even am I on the boards now at this point? It's gotta be. Uh, my guess is 13th. It's gotta be pretty low. 13th in ILs, you think? That's my guess. Those IL people well, I'm are eighth. crazy. Eighth? I'm okay. eighth in Electrode. That's not, that's not bad for not having done it in six months. I, oh, yeah, I, I recall Whom had a very good Electrode IL time. Whom, Whom was the one who was like, I was competing with most at that point. I've been competing with him as DS for a very long time <laughs> since he started in Mystery yeah. Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, go figure. We'll leave it to another PMD runner to be good at ILs. Yeah. They got it six seconds lower than what I had it had it at. My Avalug is now or my Avalug time is now fourteen seconds higher than world record. Can you roar skip? Get the halfway skip on ILs and Avalug? Probably not, because the health bar is way bigger. Yeah. Like when when we well, my, when we skip the tactical nuke on electrode, it's a very big window. But the IL runners nuke. literally yeah. have no time. Like there is a they, small window to get past the the big boom. For for Avalog, I bet they found they found a faster strategy that doesn't require you to do a, to do a combat because that's what my strategy was. It was the only one where we actually did combat. So, I bet that's where they see them all the time. That Sneasel just destroys Avalog with just one close combat since it's Ice Rock. Um, and the problem with doing not doing the combat is that the when you so in the Frenzy Lords when like they're weak, you could throw a Pokemon on at uh, at them to like do damage with it and stuff. And the music that plays during that is so good, it's and we don't get to good. hear it. No. I don't remember what it I, actually, I actually don't remember what it sounds like. I it's like, it's like a super this. intense, like da 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 like that theme, but it's like just a really good remix of it. I fought all of them casually because I wanted to. I fought all of them casually because I thought you were supposed to. 
It's fun. And then you get stuff. You get so many candies from it. And you get to talk to Melly, which is just a win in itself. Oh, oh actually. Uh, whoa. So we're going into Cobalt Coast Lands. <laughs> I'm to ask that from the record. <laughs> Getting ahead of ourselves here. Okay, so yeah, Cobalt Coast Lands I'm is a. Uh, Cobalt Coastlands looked at Crimson Mirelands and was like, hmm, that area gets a lot of flag for being hard. I want to be, I want to do that. Yeah. So somehow, slowly it's building up to be the run, area. <laughs> yeah, somehow the speedrun version of Cobalt Coastlands is a time. It is one especially, of the Especially nighttime. Yeah, there's a new segment, or new itch it's segment after, after talking it's to definitely, Polina. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, it's definitely in the top five of areas in Legends Arceus. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like Co Coastlands is like my second favorite. It's my favorite to chill in because the atmosphere is cool and I like I like beaches. Yeah. Um, it's got mantikes. That's fun. It's got it's got drifloons. It's got spheels. They roll up to the spheels. barrier yeah. system. It's got pip up. And when it they're pissed off at you, really. they roll away. Don't <laughs> just feel leave. Okay, counterpoint. Uh, I had a shiny Piplup run on me in Coastlands. Kill issue. Did you try catching it? I did you try engaging it in a battle where it can't run? Sure did. But how did it run? Mm. Because when I threw the, the battle Pokeball at it, I wasn't close enough to initiate the battle, and then it went... Th okay, so etiquette now we're right. <laughs> yep. Dang. So yeah, now the the shiny hunters know to turn off auto save and manually save before uh, fighting shinies. Yeah, uh, because it, it persists, right? Yeah. We it, BDSP does too. It's like an interesting thing that they keep doing. But Let's Go doesn't. I don't think. That's right, Horn Outbreak. Um, I don't remember if Let's Go does. Let's Go might. I don't remember. So, um, yeah, as I was saying, after we talk to Polina here, uh, who's the guard, she's the warden of, um, of Arcanine, uh, who died. Uh, <laughs> you know which one is the, you know which one is the, the heir? I don't, actually. Tough uh, question. I hope, I hope Tough let question. Us know. Um, yeah. so anyways, after we talk to Polina, we warp back, we set it to evening, since evening's only two minutes in this game, it gives us time to feed and complete feel, and then run over to, um... Like where the dust clops are and finish hopefully chat out on the way and then Which by the time bird. we're done with chat out um by the time we're finished with chat out i actually need to buy some pokeballs because i forgot to do it earlier okay do i have only shinks yeah, i do cool okay so yeah then we'll hopefully get feel and chat out done in that short amount of time and then by the time we're ready for it to be night it'll just literally turn night and then all the dust clops and dust skulls show up i kind of like this track because if you get it just right you're getting into that area, and if you get your chat outs done, you can kind of camp in the grass for a couple seconds while the ghosts spawn. Whereas that, if you're going there when it's could, um, already night, and sometimes they get a chance to aggro on you if you run in their line of sight, even with the stealth sprays up. Um, the other thing is there's like some chests and some boxes next to uh, where the dust clops is in that area. And they can have some really busted items. The chests can have sticky globs. Ultra balls, so good. Just some broken items, especially the chests. You can get, I think, mushroom cakes in them as well, which work better than raspberry. Hey, nice one turn fight. That never hey. happens. That's literally perfect. Oh no, you died. We were <laughs> oh, no, you oh, died. No, we died. <laughs> oh no, you died. Oh no. I think we you have to do I the speedrunner joke. We're going to meet the Arcanine. Unfortunate. You've lost. No. You've <laughs> lost That's so dark. Room. Uh, so You've the story here is that the there was a lord battles. here, but the, the Arcanine drowned, which is a very easy thing for an Arcanine to do in this generation, in this area. Because assuming Arcanine is a rock fire. So stepping in a puddle is fatal for an Arcanine. Looking That's probably what happened. Fatal. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just looking at it. <laughs> assuming <laughs> Arcanine dies to splash. It dies when it, see, it sees it re its reflection in the water and freaks out and has like an anxiety attack <laughs> and just dies because <laughs> water is just so, such a tremendous burden for it. Honestly, mood. The funny part is with Hisui and Arcanine being like ground, uh, rock fire, it's also weak to ground. So if it's not in the water, it's on the ground. It's so it's just, just dead either way. I was going to say it's always four times weak, but it's only two and a half times in this game. It's not a good typing. 
machine. No, it's not the best. It's Still, quite bad. It's like it's basically its regards. Exactly. It's it's, it's just a really um, cute Macargo. There's a couple Pokemon with really good typing. For example, uh, Suian's uh, Suian Fox, very good typing. Extremely good typing. Oh, the Zoroark. Suian Zoroark is so good. Yeah, it's Zoroark. 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 Whatever. <laughs> this game's stupid. <laughs> Normal Ghost is actually busted. Oh, nine spots. It's so good. good. Very good typing. And is that a 1% Leaf Stone that you got out of that one? Yes, it is. That would be very funny. Uh, this is another part we just run over and antagonize about Pokemon, oh, actually, in this case, uh, it's shot, which is that. almost as good as the Rhyhorns, in my opinion, but not as good. Okay. I enjoy the Rhyhorns make a really good sound. I enjoy the Machokes. Never... I just want to walk over and flex in front of you. I've, yeah. ne <laughs> I've never seen this as just walking up and antagonizing them, and now I just feel really self-conscious about it. That's what it is. They're You're not wrong. Business, and you run over and you throw mud and rotten fruit at them. All right, well, they're in my way, so I don't know. I will say there's nothing more satisfying in this game than the sound of backstriking a Pokemon. Oh, so it is oh, really yeah. good. So this is not a, you're not supposed to use... Wide ear to get up here and get the dog. You're supposed to like climb up later. Get a load of that yeah, dog. In the 40s. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna take advantage of the geometry and we're gonna feed some dogs. So, get a load of those dogs. I so I need I help to him. teach me again how to do this correctly because that second uh, Growlithe always aggro's me. All right, using okay. stealth sprays. Stealth spray. Yes. We're gonna troubleshoot this yes. like a computer. All right? Did you try okay. turning it on and off again? Uh, <laughs> I did not try turning it on and off again, so I guess that's Ah, there you go. That, okay. Did you try not to see? Yes! Whoa. I went up all stealthy! Did you, did you try catching it? I it second worked for Pikachu. Hulk. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe my, maybe I did my not game. I'm Pikachu again. Okay. Right, I'm gonna get the no. bonus fox. Bonus yes. fox. You know what? You know what this boils down to. I got it. Bad switch entropy. Yes. True. true. I, why did I do that? That was stupid. Don't you want to feed it more? Uh, yeah. Some would say that. I'm just hoping another one up ahead. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, Vulpix just, is not a guaranteed spawn. Um, it's not. Growlithe. Lucky. Yeah, Growlithe is uh, guaranteed up where we got it. It's also able to be spawned over at the end of this sort of. Overhead. Literally oh. never been punished once in my sing in my entire life. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is a better situation. <laughs> yeah, this, this is better just because there are two Vulpixes that you can sort of feed at the same time, although you're getting ratioed by a beautiful It's an attempt. It's failing miserably. Okay, let's chill out <laughs> just for like a second. <laughs> That, that's, the, fun of it. that's the acid rain weather that May thought there existed. There we go. In the game. I told you all it's real. <laughs> I, I can't you doubt believe it, I'm living I'm in the reality genius. of acid rain. Can you like chill, brother? The cool thing about getting hit by a status effect is that you can't do anything when you're hit affected by it. I do still need two beautifies at some point in my existence, so just work on helping me out with that. That was a good time for that turn out. Oh, it's just bad. <sighs> oh, yeah, so the Alpha, if you're playing Monster Hunter, oh a game that this game is you're... incredibly inspired by. I don't get um, any beautifies. I'll just evolve myself. None. Yeah. The, your um, beautifies are awful. You might be familiar with the fact that sometimes the monsters will roar, which then knocks you down. And they do that in this game, too. If you're far enough away, it's not a problem. But if you aren't far enough away, you just get knocked down. You didn't put enough points in your earplugs, Jen. Yeah, more, having, um, more puppers. More puppers. There is more chances to which get beautiful. Which one's the child? Uh, I don't know. What you guys think? Well, I mean, the, the wardens one? are pretty big, so the big one, right? Yeah, we'll Alright, can you one. do this? Can you do the swag uh, unknown catch? Yes, yes. I don't know where it is. Do I it. literally have no okay, idea. Okay, so where it's it literally. Alright, so you see the. You see, you literally run right behind her, essentially. Is like it on the other like side the of the rock? Two things that jut I... out. Yeah. You know that. Rock, you, know that rock. you know that rock is a gravestone. I never acknowledge that, but I can see it. I never I acknowledge. It. I never even realized that was a gravestone. That means they had to carry yeah, like, the dog up here. Like, what was... Who did that? 
Probably her. That, that That's an insane feat of strength. All right, so yeah, if you run back behind there and then okay. you kind of slide down. Oh, is right that it? So right between there? there, you see, you see, but yeah, yeah, it's right uh, there. Okay. You, you could just. I, I, you don't I, even I, have to jump uh, off. It's just cooler if you so do. Bad. Trying to hit these things. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're gonna have to jump off. You're gonna. <laughs> there we go. Please, thank you. Thanks, so, unknown. Very cool. All so right. There's a. Anyways. There's R. R. I've gotten really good at unknown um, identification after doing Tokuan Tactic Adventure, so. <laughs> I agree, that is an unknown. It's R. There's a level where you just have to name unknowns, and I was really, really bad at it, but I have to become good at it to hey, get the gold medal. On I, it, so I, I'm really, good at it. I really hope that Scarlet Violet has new unknown versions with the accents. What? Okay. The E, the, Poke the e, Pokemon E, but with an accent. I want, I want an Intero Bang unknown. Yes. Or, oh, hashtag yeah, unknown. Actually, actually, hashtag yes. Hashtag unknown. <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay, these spiels are all amazing. They're, They're all, all very spielical. Rotund. These rotund children. You think, children. like, how would, how, do you think, like, I don't even think uh, Ryan could even use a phone without a hashtag unknown. <laughs> this is true. Did you eat? I don't know if you ate or not. But either either way, I need to catch a third one, so go ahead and have another one. I love that they just roll. They literally just roll end over end. It's cool. so right. perfect. I'm gonna try to catch a Weasel and a um a pom on the way just for a free 20, 40 points. Oh, you don't you don't do you don't do monkeys anymore? No, monkeys are terrible. Good. Monkeys were so bad. I was so happy when they got removed from there. We have to do this movement specifically because there's a lady um, in, in between these two little... Um, oh, in this valley that has a cutscene associated with yeah. the other side. Yeah, not. yeah she's, she's like, I need help uh, creating a new campsite farther down the area, and we don't want to have any of it. As we all know, helping people is slow. Helping people is really cringe, honestly. Running out Especially of daylight, you better, you better hustle. I don't want the chat. I don't want the beautiful fly. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I did already have one beautiful fly. Okay. Oh, All right. Really, really pushing hey, the definition time. of daylight hours on that. My beloved. These were the worst when we didn't have stealth spray. It was so bad. Yeah, they're much better now. Okay, that was actually incredibly quick. I love that once it does officially turn to night, that the, the birds literally just fly away. They don't just despawn, they fly away. Yeah, they fly away. That's how birds work, as an expert in the field. <laughs> that's how birds work. So we, we also have a new item that's going to be uh, probably being used here, and they're called Scatterbangs, and they have a massive area of effect. Uh, they're used to scare Pokemon. Which would be seen as cruel, but it's optimal, so we do it. It's... It's just like fun scaring. It's it's like those little like those little pop things you have for the Fourth of July. Uh, and you just throw them at your siblings' feet, and you're like, "Haha, it's scaring you." It's, we're just doing that. Pretty harmless. We do have to catch. Um, we're required to catch a. Oh my god. That's Dust cringe. Clops. Ooh, Dust that's. That's yeah. close, my beloved. Yeah, and it's it's also worth mentioning the the scatterbangs only work on non aggro Pokemon. So where the stun items will work on aggro Pokemon, um, you do have to make sure if we want to scare a Dusclop or a Duskull that it's not already aggroed on us. Did, uh, you you scared a Drifloon drift too. I don't want a Drifloon right now. Catch a Drift. Okay. I'm the fan. <laughs> uh, that's me. <laughs> My name is Fan. <laughs> the, the, the one singular fan. All right, we did I like get Drifloon a lot. I actually, my casual I playthrough like, focused very heavily on my Typhlosion and Drifloon because I love ghost types. Wait, May loves Drifloon? I didn't I know. Drifloon. I love Drifloon so much. How many plushies do you actually Thanks, have Thanks, of Drifloon? Cool. These moths and butterflies not do. Uh, how many Drifloon plushies do I have? Yeah. Drif just Loon or Loon and Blend? Uh, both. 14? How many more? How many are shiny? Two. 
So I'm actually a little bit concerned. I don't have dust talks either. Because like I just don't have time to like sit there and I don't have the Pokeballs either. I only had four Pokeballs left, so the yeah, unknown didn't help. Yeah, your <laughs> like your uh, Wurple, so. your Wurple lines were <laughs> not kind to you today. And this is really this part of the run where things start to go a little off track more than usual. Like, if I really need to, I can do Clefairy. Like, it's not the end of the world. I would just really prefer to not do that. <laughs> you, I guess you could show off, like, Voltorb strats or something, unless that's, True. like, in the route. Voltorb is uh, an option in the route. It's more preferable than Clefairy. The Cleffa. The Cleffa spawn's kind of hype, but still, it just <laughs> suffers from the same issue of a... Magikarp, um, that's a fun one. Go old school and do Golbat. Oh, bad. That yeah. was such a good move. Yeah. Back when we didn't know using moves in battle was slow. It's pretty slow. Yeah, he's afraid of dusk. Uh, dust bops. Dust bops. bops. Mm -hmm. Dust bops, but we need one to make a special snack that summons Basky Legion. Another new Pokemon. Ooh. Ah. I can't believe this guy has a phobia of ghosts. Basculin, uh, you need to take 294 recoil damage with Basculin in a single life. If Basculin dies at any point, you have to start over. Yeah. I just liked when Basculin was uh, announced and like the description was like, it consumes the souls of its dead friends or something bizarre <laughs> it's like, like that. Super it's like super dark this like Pokemon? immediately for like no reason. <laughs> That's because all ghost type Pokemon have the most metal lore. Ghost type Pokemon have metal or lore than steel type. Well, it's Truth either about that. it's either metal lore or like incurable prankster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're either like a a demon walking this earth, uh, haunting everyone that you can even see, or Thought just a goofy little guy. <laughs> They're just little guys. Just a little guy. Try to have fun. I mean, we learned we learned that uh, what I always knew, which is um, that Pokemon is full of vicious anti drifloon propaganda in this game. I just remember there is the side your... quest. There is the I side remember, quest of uh, the kid who befriends the drifloon, and all the parents start getting real concerned. They're just friends. Anytime I go to May's stream, I would just see like the meme of like, so I took that person with Drifloon. <laughs> 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 That's the first okay. thing I think of when I hear when I see Drifloon. Mate, did you know that that kid with the with the Drifloon side quest? Uh, after you do the quest, he's just in the he's in the the big building in Jubilife. Let me let me grab that meme for chat. <laughs> All right, it's so good. So so Bubblepedia says Basculin Legion's evolution is said to be achieved by a surviving white striped Basculin being possessed by the deceased souls of other Basculin in its school. <sighs> Who did not survive the harsh journey swimming upstream? What? Jeez, so that's, I like it. So bad. Kids game, by the way. <laughs> Kids game BTW. Apparently. Uh, you know what? I'll bring one of these. I just want to note that the I've I've never seen anybody um, hold Quilava this long since like the second oh, yeah, or I was supposed third to, uh, yeah, round. I'm gonna use, yeah, I'm gonna use it for um one of the fights. Coming up. There you go, some more Pokeballs. Okay. Yeah, it's been timed and like uh Kolava takes out a bomb of snow in one hit with with strong flame wheel. So that's the reason for that. Also, uh Amber, if you want to take a break, this is a three minute cutscene. <laughs> go ahead and uh, talk about a few things real quick. Uh, first and foremost, did you know that we have a highlights channel on YouTube and that features standout moments from our hotfix shows? If you want to know about that, use exclamation mark highlights in Twitch chat. And then furthermore, um, if you are watching on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested to look at our live content. We start weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and most weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And of course, we appreciate your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, your GIFT subs, and your bits. All of those cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel help support weekly hotfix content. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy these weekly hotfix shows. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, 
that's about all I had to say in terms of any announcements. Uh, shout outs to the fact that in my casual playthrough, I didn't know that Basque Legion had a f different form if it was a uh, female. It took me till post game. I also did not know that until right now. Yeah, no, they have two completely different forms and they both look really cool. Yeah, the other one looks oh. very different. Yeah, Etiquette, I don't appreciate you snuffing different. Jigglypuff on your uh, on your tier list there of balloon Pokemon. <laughs> and also, everyone's talking about how ghosts have like typically really metal Pokedex entries. Isn't there like Drampa that like if it finds out that like you know a child has been bullied, it'll find that bully's uh, house and burn it God, to the ground? God, please don't, please don't ruin Drampa for me. <laughs> I thought like, he was there's precious. There's just so yeah. many. If, if a no, child he is, has but made, but he is precious, though. If a child has made friends with his bully, Grandpa will find the bully's house and burn it to a ground. Jesus. Yeah, that's awesome. That's like a legitimate thing. That's awesome. And then there's like Alolan Ninetales. It's like it doesn't show people the, the way out of snowy mountains because it's a good Pokemon. It does so, so it hur they hurry up and go home. They don't want to deal with people in their mountains. True. I identify with that so much. Yeah. <laughs> Me when people are over, yeah. Like, Gen 7's Pokedex entries were absurd. There's, like, one about... I forget which Pokemon it is, but it's, like... Um, it, it goes on about... <laughs> it goes on about how there's, um... Uh, like, it, it can change, like, your thoughts or rewrite your memories. And it goes on about, like... You two may have already have your, had your memories rewritten right now, and I'm just like, what in the world oh, cool. were oh, they cool. on this Pokedex? Um, it's like if if Chansey, or I think it's Blissey, senses like strong emotions, it'll come to help. And offer you an Hattery, egg in these trying times. Yeah, but if, uh, but if Hatterene senses strong emotions, it'll come snap your neck. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. <laughs> Wait, so it's just a 50-50 chance. With what arms? <laughs> Let me figure out what the exact dex entry is. I don't is. think Hatterene has arms. Maybe it just coils if, around you like a you're snake. If you too loud around it, you risk being torn apart by the claws on its on its tentacle. That's what... That's terrifying. I'm gonna play... There it is, yeah. I'm gonna play the video. It can move the emotion of creatures over 30 miles away. The moment it senses hostility, it goes on the attack. Gigamax. I also have learned this from this, and that they're called Gigamax Pokemon. I don't think so. Maybe? Does Charizard have a Mega? I'll look Wait, do up. Megas also have their own entries? <laughs> so, to, so, say if Charizard has two Megas, Megas are they do. different entries? Actually, yes. <laughs> I got a distortion. <laughs> you got a nice five-minute distortion. It had to be like five minutes or something, right? It has to be. I've... There it oh, is. Shoot, Am you Amber, can see if it in you the still background. need a Magnemite, I can get you one. Look at the Magnemite. Look at the Magnemite. Uh, share a few weeks, Dan. I do like shells as a, po as a Pokemon. I, I mean, don't like that Gastrodon's like a thing. In or it, it's a very integral part of the route too. Yeah, it it like exactly counters a fight later on. I yeah, mean, water, water, like, water it's even ground a is a good Pokemon. typing. Good for, good for Gastrodon. That being said, it the really annoys me that Earth Power does more to Rhyperior than Water Pulse does. Oh yeah. Because of the whole four times being two and a half times. Yeah. That was one of the first things on. I noticed. I noticed it casually. I don't know I was why just like, it. there's no way this what? is four times effective. Huh? Oh, I'm oh, did you try did you oh, try aiming? God. I tried targeting it. And that failed. Uh, these With are the back. Fans? Yeah, yeah, the video yeah. are video. Shout outs to like only one trainer oh. in, in Diamond Pearl having a Luminian for you to see. Hey. Like if you don't go and catch it yourself. So to catch nine my million. Favorite Eevee Lucian. I was gonna Finians. say this is the favorite Eevee Lucian of the run. Finion. My favorite's Leon. Mine's Charmeleon. Mine's Patreon. Charmeleon, yeah. Patreon. Mine's 
Jan Kamala. It's probably the smoothest plug I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't even have a Patreon. I don't even attempt to look it up. Hey, wouldn't it be Flute, comma, Eon? Subscribe to my Patreon. I will personally deliver yes, your city's weather to you in a weatherman voice. <laughs> Except I could just do that for that. See, that's the funny thing. Like, like I'll just trick myself. I could, I could pay wallet, and then you could just ask me, and I'll just tell you the weather. We're almost to, almost to noble number three. Except there is no noble of this land. Okay, I, might, I need to make sure I'm actually going to finish chat out with uh, this ranger tool that May actually made. I think I got two chat outs. I didn't feed any of them, but maybe I can finish chat out with moves. I've never done this before. Never done this before either. I too am going to look up May's Ranger tool. Basically takes all the dex entries and it's literally into this whole site. Cool. Times you've seen it use air cutter. Times you've uh, seen it use an agile style move. Yeah, I'm gonna get to 90 at, at best, so that's not gonna happen. Let's mm. evolve it. Only I you don't get points for it. Wait. Oh, well, yeah. you got baited. Congrats. I think I baited. <laughs> I walked right into that one. Too bad Chatter's not a thing anymore. Uh, yeah, they just, it was just too busted yeah. engine for it. And also, what do you even do in this game? Because confusion doesn't exist. You can find a way. That's the last time you'll ever what see Quilava alive. Is, what do they make Water Pulse as secondary effect again? I don't remember what it is. It doesn't miss. Uh, it's confusion. It in miss, in these games, is, yeah. that's not normal. That's just Arceus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not in this game because it normally confuses and doesn't exist. I forgot to switch the battle thing to Gastrodon, I think. Oh, well. It'll be fine. That's a fun mechanic in this game. You can switch your lead for the next battle in battle. Which I think, other than a post-game fight that we won't spoil, I think this is the only place that that matters. matters. Yeah, because like, you, you have these three back-to-back like, back fights. From a fight into a fight immediately, yeah. Was that realized later? Because originally we like, put our party in a certain yeah. order to do stuff. I, okay. I noticed it once by accident, and then I showed it off in, like, a, I think it was in a marathon. So I'm just getting my bulldoze out of the way for the first ring, so I don't have to worry about it later. Right for the jugular, eh? Oh my god, I lived. Okay. Didn't even kill, yeah. Let's go first ring. Swapping isn't as punishing. As nah, it's pretty good. Oh, I think I'm supposed to use Mud Bomb because some reason Gengar thinks it has to use Dark Pulse so it doesn't put you to sleep. I don't know, there's something with that. But uh, Gastron is oh. probably fine here. Oh, Dark yeah. Pulse is probably a no miss move. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, no. anything, any move with Pulse doesn't miss in this game. Yeah. Don't know why, but oh, it's effects. just the truth. I, I get it. That was. That was, uh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a guy. Okay. <laughs> well, we haven't <laughs> seen Fog <laughs> yet. What a disgrace. And there's no fog or pulse. Well, I haven't <laughs> seen fog yet. I thought he was talking about pulse. I was like, pulse. geez. Oh, my God. But I realize it's just what she says after the fight's over. Oh, oh. <laughs> but then there, there, it uh, is so a disgrace this, that there's fog in this game, yeah. Yes. Now this dog's going to 1v3 them. And do something that Hulk only wishes he could do in a catch -em all What would that be? Get a Firestone? Evolve? It's Evolve without a Firestone. True, dude. That's so annoying. Luckily, Firestone's not the worst items to get in the game. We have like a, in Catch Mode, we have a big three that um, you need two of to finish the run. Uh, upgrade, 
dubious disc and magmarizer. Because why do you not? Why do you not need the third? Well, because you can buy the third one with merit points. Oh, 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 oh! Because oh. there's enough I satchels. Thinking, like, there's enough satchels to buy one of those. So you need yeah, to get okay, the other two sense. from like Gidzer or Distortions. Uh, but also, you could just get a straight up Magnazone or not Magnazone, Mag Mortar in uh, the Coronet Distortions, and also you could just straight up get a PZ or a Porygon two in the Crimson Distortion. Or you could be like Kizaron and get a shiny Porygon Z. That's distortion. ridiculously unlikely. It's so was, was it, crazy. Was it, no, it wasn't post game because it's keys. Keys never made any progress in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember like just trying yeah. to get to max rank in area one period for like weeks. <laughs> yeah, he did that. He did that for weeks. Uh, when Shen and, runs this game, his like his obsidian field land splits is called uh, this. This area took keys 100 hours. Yeah. <laughs> And I think with the help of etiquette, uh, we actually calculated that it's impossible to get to rank 10 in just area one. Yes. He spent all this time doing this and like he didn't even make a YouTube video with like the clickbait title. Can you reach max rank in Legends of Arceus without leaving the first area? Question mark, question mark, question mark. It's <laughs> an easy one million view video. Ed should have made it like a 10 hour video and it just answers it in the first five seconds and then it's just for it's walking. Just no, it's, it's just a single frame, it just says no. Alright, so this is the frenzied um, Arcanine fight. Oh, this is like, the best fight. This, is, this strat this changed, and so I no longer know it. What we used to do is you just dive to the side, but now you dive through it. You dive through yeah, it because like, every other turn. Because yeah. you can basically lock him into doing like the the charge back and forth, like May was saying. Um, but if you do this, he kind of has to alternate between jumping and charging, and he gives you more time to hit him while he's jumping. Um, yeah, so what you don't want to do is uh, just, like, not dodge. If you just dodge, like, the side, then what'll happen is he'll, like, charge all the way across, which is extremely slow, because you have to throw really far. Uh, but if you just do this... Then and, and it works until the halfway really point because now he, yeah, now he put the fire spin in the middle, yeah, and then, and then he, he can decide. either he can either go to the other side or do what he just did, nice. and you got that it really perfectly. Because yeah. yeah, basically, the in the was first phase, about, um, in the first phase, we we manipulate him to always jump into the middle, and any predictability we can give the boss is definitely good. Um, yeah. is you know, reacting to RNG is not the, fun. Uh, <laughs> what the? They're not actually particularly random any of the Frenzy of Lords fights. No, they the RNG's in the second random. phase here where he can either run towards you or yeah. run towards making your life miserable. Yeah, what, what he was about to do at the... Than they are. Yeah, what he was about to do at the end there, which he can do on a, on a cycle beforehand, is run to the other side of the arena and start charging its ultimate attack. Uh, and you just you prevent it by hitting him five times, but oh, he's on uh, the other side of the arena and you have to walk through the fire spin. So you do it always you takes, um, yeah. it always takes uh, two <laughs> rounds for him to start charging the ultimate attack. So like if you get the dash through the fire on the first turn, uh, he'll just dash right back and then you'll maybe dash again, but he doesn't do the, the he doesn't do the fire charge on the first time. I believe in the That's IL, you always have to, to break the thing at least once though. Mm -hmm. You have to do eight more hits. Yeah, because like the the rematches are way higher level, so they have they take way more bombs to kill. Except Arceus, I think Arceus is literally the same level. I think my PB dies Arceus to Arcanine. Nice. Yeah. Uh, my, my first runs few did. runs, my first few runs, I died to Arcanine. Arcanine and, is uh, like surprisingly the most difficult. Everyone thinks it's Avalog, but I think Arcanine's the most difficult. Avalog's so easy. Avalog's fun. It's just kind of like a, it's so, like a it's yeah. like a bullet hell. I love it. Yeah, it's like once you know the once you understand that Avalog is completely deterministic, Avalog is so easy. Yeah. Um, Electrode is like just precise. Electrode has an unconventional strategy you wouldn't think about. Yeah. Well, but once you the once you accept that you're taking damage, it becomes a lot easier. Yes. 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 Exactly. And then, um, Arcanine I actually never thought was that hard, but I did, but, um, but I don't know about the new strategy, because I did an old strat. 
happen. What happens for me and Arcanine is that in the second half, his charge attack is like a little faster, but um. maybe I'm just skill issue and I would try to dodge a little earlier and he would hit me when my invincibility frames ran out and I would Probably start I would start taking a lot of damage and the last time I died on it I took so much damage that when he ran to the other side to do his unite move I was on like red health and it's like well I can't hit him and I walked into the fire and died and then I mashed A. Yeah, because you need, and when you you need mash one a, health to get to the fire. When you mash A, he resets his health from full and not from the final quarter of health. That is true. So I've I lost that, even right. more time to that. All right, it all feels fair. bad. I'm I'm very bad at this game. Don't don't be fooled. I'm actually terrible at video games. Uh, I'm gonna buy some more uh, stealth spray materials just for safety. Um let's see. Yeah, like four. I have about like six. Uh, my points are a little bit low, um, but I forgot to finish Machoke. So I can fix this because we're at rank 8 right now on Machoke, and we need to get to rank 10. Uh, we're going to get points from defeating one because there's a guaranteed one we have to fight. Um, and I'm going to hope that there's one I can stun uh, just lying around in corner. Usually is, yeah. You're at 6340, was that what I saw? Yeah, it's pretty low. That's pretty low. Uh, I didn't get Finneon. I didn't get Chatot. Um, you gotta finish with choke. I didn't get dust hawks either, so. Ugh. See, yeah, I tried this to get is dust hawks, but <laughs> they didn't want. So they didn't want none. This is definitely the the most stressful part of the game. This is the this is the most math. So, so May, you should actually be great at area four because you're great at doing math. Yeah. 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 All so we, we need like to get. Table. Um, uh, well, I like that. I'm like now. Expected to just be good at math. We have a whole table. Uh, May if I if I can send you a screenshot of this, can you we send just, it to the chat? Room? We just need we just need yeah, two thousand one hundred and sixty okay. points, and all the the only question is how do we get there? That's math. That is that is math. Okay. Where's May? I'm trying to think of what you're gonna try to do. I'm thinking you're gonna the... well, you'll probably go for the Yanmas and Yanmegas. It's right a little bit off confusing because I made Shady put a second column. Because Shady had changed it to be, um, uh, and extras needed to finish because we don't count Yanma as, and Skuntank as extra since they're always getting finished. Um, and I was like, that's going to confuse me because I count everything. Isn't I, the second column I just two more than the left column? Yes, yes. That's literally the only difference is that the, the right the right column counts Yanma and Skuntank, and the left one doesn't. Here's the whole Google document. <laughs> so I can scroll down to that part and see what the rest of it yeah, says. Yeah. I guess I'll provide it I to the whole. I beginning of this uh, when when Hulk was like, "Oh, actually, it's like the easiest, the easiest Pokemon run to think about mentally." I didn't and like, say that. <laughs> May look. I said once you learn it, it's fun. May look. Oh, it's my favorite. I. So I'm gonna look at my spreadsheet because it makes me not look at the video game right now. <laughs> um, okay, so if I have 6,300, I need to finish uh, nine Pokemon total in court and not Cornet. A beautiful disaster, son. Okay, so that would mean I need to finish. Uh, well, I didn't really get much done in Hippotas. What's the lore behind Melly? That's a question for May. It's a jerk. What's the lore about? The, the lore behind Melly is that Melly is. My favorite, one of my favorite archetypes of character, which is literally not a character who uh, won't admit uh, that they're outclassed, but a character that cannot admit that no, they're Melly outclassed. No, Melly is literally a mean girl from the 2002 movie Mean Girls. Exactly. And that is the We're in girl archetype. world now. I don't think it's 2002, but you know what I mean. It's like four, yeah. It's pretty old. It's so four, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we bring Gastro out here because Gastro actually dies to this. Oh, really? wow. Uh, grass type Gastro died? No. No. <laughs> I mean, you weren't. You were two and a half. You were four times weak. You were only two and a half two times and a half weak to times that. Times weak, yeah. Yeah, because nobody, nobody wanted to mate with Melly. That's why they don't have a descendant. I thought it was Avery. Who's Avery? Avery's sword and shield DLC. 
From Shield. Sword and Shield? Shield yeah. DLC yeah. specifically. Big Avery vibes. That's a stretch. <laughs> I thought it it'd be stretch. people from. Uh, it's like Dino it's the Pearl. tall four people. Yeah, it's the tall hat that sells it for me. Well, you say Gen four people, but then like Benny Wally. I mean, Ingo is literally in the game. All right, you got me. Okay, okay, but Ingo's literally only in the game because of a pun. What's the pun? I don't remember exactly. Help me try to look <laughs> it up. I know that Melee is not like. A descendant Popular. or a, a uh, like ancestor of anyone, from what I understand. That's for the best. Everyone's everyone benefited from that. Yeah, I I big agree. <laughs> I actually could not stand melee through my whole playthrough. I love I melee. Just wanted melee to like shut up. Honestly. The 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 free DLC. What is, what is it called? Daybreak. He has like this big arc with uh with with Liam, and they just oh, like yeah. get real competitive with okay. each other. Um, somebody asked it. a question okay. in chat. Uh, how is Legend Arceus compared to other games from a speedrunning perspective? I think there's a mo common misconception with speedrunning that you have to like break the game for it to be fun. I think this game would actually be worse if the research requirement was lifted. Is like that's what makes it yeah, fun and interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's the... like Let's Go. The reason why Let's yeah. Go is fun is because you have to actually catch the. Let's Go is so bad if you're not catching stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So. Ingo's Japanese name is Nobori, which means climb. Uh, and oh, climbing, uh, climbing a mountain is Yama Nobori, and the quest involving Ingo in game is scare scaling perilous height or Abunai Yama Nobori. So climbing the mountain with Ingo is Yama Nobori with Nobori, or Ingoing the mountain with Ingo. So you think that's the whole basis for an entire character's inclusion? I fully believe that, yes. 100%. I, I also just out. randomly picked this, like, this Gen 5 battle subway character. Probably Hi, because he okay. is equivalent to the battle subway of this. I don't know. I like this explanation. It's more fun. I mean, I think there's probably a reason why he's the Warden of Sneasel, uh, Sneasler, though. Like, that, that would probably be it. Yeah. Yeah. That absolutely makes sense. Because Sneasler carries you in a box, and a train is a box that carries you as well. I can't handle the lore right now. A little right. bit too, uh, too distracting. Well, this is, this I, is, I, I do have to admit that the, I didn't think I'd have to think about. The getting carried in the, the, the box in the back is a Are little Are you kidding me? Freaky. I can't catch Yenmas today, dude. I was mentioning anything how Yenmas Anything like, with wings. Anything with wings is just not a friend. They're, they're very yeah. much foes. Uh, okay, I guess I'll go up here. Winged now. bugs, not your, not doing it for you today. No. I'm gonna try to go this way. I'm gonna try. A, I'm gonna try a very subtle approach to the Yenma. I'm gonna miss a lot of the evening stuff that I had to do. Is it these Yenmas? Oh well. I mean, that's classic for both Yenma <laughs> and Yenmega. I hope two of those were unseen. I'm pretty sure they were. But your two Yenmegas were. I. The I Yenmegas still were can't sick, believe actually. that everyone, um, like... I've never had Yen would be the problem, but Yen Mega not. Well, Melly's yeah, that just, that Melly's just mean for literally no reason and with no redemption art. Literally like, every time Melly came on screen, I was like, this guy's hilarious. It's such a fan. The, the main problem I have with Melly is at the end, when everyone's trying to be all serious, just goofing off, and I'm like, shut up. That's what I do! This all makes um, sense now. Uh, it's same same thing with like very similar to Avery in terms of characterization of just like Avery also no, sucked. I'm, That's why I Avery think he's was, the descendants because they Avery have the same also, mannerisms. Avery was also hilarious. Also, now's another good time for a break if you want to take one, Amber. Yeah, I just want really? to remind uh, everyone that uh, if I can pull up my uh, announcements, here we go. Uh, just reminding everyone, since it's been a couple hours since we mentioned it, Frame Fatales uh, is coming up in a couple of weeks, starting on August 21st through the 27th. Uh, it's going to be its uh, their next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, and that schedule is out right now. So if you type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or you go to gamesonquick.com forward slash Frame Fatales, you'll get more info on that. And prize submissions are open right now, so if you're interested in submitting a prize, check out the website for more info on that. And then if you want a weekend marathon, 
Uh, that's coming up this weekend, August 13th to the 14th, One and Done-a-thon. Uh, it is a marathon where you can show off your favorite run, and that's your only appearance in the One and Done-a-thon <laughs> series. And that schedule is out right now. So if you use exclamation mark O-A-D-A-T or O-D-A-T in, uh, in Twitch chat to learn more about that, you'll find out that Corva May's uh, one submission <laughs> is uh, Pokemon Typing Adventures. <laughs> it's a favorite game. <laughs> Must be a really good game. <laughs> the best way to spend your one and done good, on honestly. like showcase right there. Yeah, it's like not a bad the game. The music in that game is actually banging. Like no, I lie. know it has no right it's to really have good. good music. It's it's a it's a genius sonority game. It's like it's legit the same people so, who did. I don't know if you Hollow saw. XD. Of course it's good. Yes, but I did, XD just get, um, I did just get um, I did just get sixty points for free with that Zubat. <laughs> Yeah, that that's was a one to great say. Zubat. Usually that's a that Golbat time, spawn, but if, since it's a Zubat and since it's daytime, we get a bunch of points. That is a weird Psyduck. I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, these, these trying to little spawns. spawns. Oh my god. I, listen, I'm excited Fun. to see the Psyduck. Fun. I just wasn't expecting him let's, to be let's, vibing let's there. Be civil. Really, I need to wait for this. I need, to, I need to wait for this Golduck to be not stunned because there's no other Golduck spawns. <laughs> That's why I said it was weird. Just trying to be practical. There's still a lot about this, Oh huh? my god, okay. it's fogging. Hey, it's foggy! Yeah, it just turned around because the gold duck broke out for some reason. Cool. Listen, I, you, buddy. I'm i gonna take ownership and say that I accurately predicted that because I said something about fog yet. No, during fog, nothing is accurate. So they wanted to make a faithful adaptation of Sinnoh at a time before, and they really did that. <laughs> well, good luck hitting your moves in Fog. Somebody made like a Fog Champ emote in my in my chat, and like one of the <laughs> emote, and it's just like the Pog phase, just kind of like. <laughs> Obscured by fog. <laughs> I made a, I made one for Sparkle that was like her um, fog root gen four, and it was like a fog gate from Dark Souls. Ah, he missed night slash. Oh my god, the fog's working for me. No, come on. He missed the power. Yeah, it's it. Is it working great, huh? Yeah, it's so good. Oh, he's gonna get crit. No, he core didn't. Come on. I'm surprised I have not thought yeah. to add a oh, fog-ish emote. Maybe I'll have to commission you for theme ideas, May. I'm gonna use Water Pulse because it doesn't miss. <laughs> and the HP was low enough to where I was very certain that would kill, especially with a defense drop. So it's a really cool strat to get this Wisp that you can see in the background, but we're not gonna do it because Wisps mean nothing in this category. You can't just tell you us that there's a strat and then not tell us the strat. You you get it. You just pick it up, yeah. If I it's didn't already waste there. so much time on the, if I didn't if I didn't already waste so much time on the Yenmas, I would definitely show it off. If you didn't <laughs> waste so much time anymore. in the last battle by missing moves. Oh yeah, that's also time of day gone. That sucks. I forgot time of day still passes during battles. But I don't have to. Matters. I don't have to. We're stall not meaning that is actually important. We need it to be nighttime for the rest of the catching portion. Um, I don't have to stall Tangela for ancient power because I caught three and fed three, so I'm at rank nine right now. All I need is the defeat to finish Tangela. I keep forgetting you named the character after me, and it's very jarring. <laughs> I forgot. Well, I, I just see you. my name, and this I'm like, "What? Oh yeah." First time playing the game. It's a solid game. I, I enjoy it. Oh, wait. I like uh, the idea that I do know all these things about the game, but I have no. Use strat alert. Uh, you can s use scatterbangs on our strings for points. That's how we finish it now without bulldoze. I think. Ooh, that's very quick. Now the problem is I don't have a whole lot of scatterbangs. That may have been a mistake. <laughs> but I did want to show that off. Uh, want to use... The other problem is that it's still foggy. Wait. Okay, no, yeah, 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 Mike is right. That was a brain fart. I was like, where's Starly? Where's Staravia? 
but you know how Starly hasn't been in a route for like five months at this point. <laughs> you need to let it go. Rip Starly. Yeah, the, the eventual phasing out of Staravia, Staraptor, Starly was kind of kind of sad and slow. You know, it was just like, oh, you know, we can uh, we can you know, use Rufflet that has Brave Bird. And now um, we don't even do that anymore. No, it started out okay. We don't need to evolve uh, Staravia into Staraptor because you can still get Brave Bird with Staravia, and the level doesn't really matter too much. And then it became, oh, well, now we don't even need Staravia at all. And then there were some oh, let's see Air Slash and Fog. Yeah. That's fine. But, no, there were, there were some Pokemon like Luxray, like, was in, and then got removed, and then got added back, and then got removed again. So, like, the, the end game routing with the... Because, as you can see, basically, like, these fights, it's a lot of <gasps> traits. It's the, the, the wipe swap that Kalk was mentioning earlier. Oh, uh, nice ancient power boost, by the way. Oh, no. Thank you. Hey, it doesn't boost speed, at least. It's lagging so hard right now. The game is actually I dropping love, frames. I love status lag. In the most literal sense, status lag, too. Okay, it's no longer fogging, and now the defense boost is gone, so that's good. I'm going to set out Yenma here, um, because the next thing that come out, comes out is going to kill it in one shot um, with a, uh, Aerial Ace. Whereas Yen Mega would take two hits to kill, or a strong hit, which I don't want to wait for. So it's a little fact, the weather, the weather can change mid-battle. As we saw. <laughs> yeah. Kind of cool. I mentioned it a few hours ago, but you know, it has been a few hours, and there's new people here. It has so. been a few hours. Shout out to All this right. Bliscor, one of the, the first Pokemon you encounter that can this just is a range. combo you. This is a range, and I probably should have taken this chance, but... Okay, yeah, that's fine. If only rain still boosted. No, no, it's fine. I can finish. Uh, I can finish my choke here. It's fine. Uh, strong bullet punch. <laughs> you just gotta flex on. <laughs> Completely calculated. Yeah. Just don't miss. It's no longer fogging. That's not an option, man. Oh yeah, it's raining now. Okay. Also, I, thought... I just mentioned the rain too, and I just like immediately forgot. No, it's rain fogging. Oh, 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 at least it's not. At least it's not poison fog rain. Or if you're if you're if you're playing as a fire type Pokemon, your day is just like extra ruined. <laughs> All of the negative. Can, can you imagine the 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 Growlis? And they're just like no, a, a fine mist in the air. Maybe maybe this is how the Arcanine died. Just by Fun breathing and the Ingo, humidity. Ingo is bald. No way. I'm pretty, sure that's, I'm pretty sure that's not fanon. Is that's that, actually real? Is that a fun fact? Anyways, yeah. this is Sneasler. This is the new evolution for Hisui and Sneasel. This thing is a big Sneasler is really just, funny. They, it's like they just dragged a Sneasel upward in MS Paint. <laughs> yeah, it's, they, it's they really made funny. A, just made a long cast on Sneasel. Yeah, <laughs> just made a long what Sneasel. <laughs> what if Sneasler had, or what if Sneasel had more hot topic energy? <laughs> <laughs> That's these things. She's judging us for sure. She just laughs in our face when we play her favorite song. It hurts a little bit. Oh my god, I'm getting the midnight theme right now. Ugh, that's so bad. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta hustle. You know, at no point did I realize that the songs were tied to the time. I just was like, oh, they, it's playing this track now. Woo. They, they it sure me, are. It took me like alert. three weeks to realize the game had music, okay? Okay, that's... <laughs> it's atmospheric. That's, that's insane. This is what BDSP does to your brain. No, it's just because it's either really faint or it only happens at certain times because like whenever you're near a Pokemon, it changes to something else. Did you not hear the absolute banger that is Crimson Mirelands 2? Oh, yeah, you got five. That's Alabaster pretty... Icelands. Is yeah, they're really yes. awesome. Well, that one, There's that an one's amazing also really good. track in Alabaster Icelands, I think, after you finish the main story in that area. Like, maybe I'm. Maybe that's just like when it finally played for me, but there's like an amazing track. I don't track know if it's. I don't think it's. I know the, the yes. one that you get 
you at least get it in any percent when you're like flying with the Braviary, that's the one that's sort of really good. For yeah. You. yeah. Well, the problem yeah. is that you don't hear it that much because whenever you get within, uh, I don't have any more stuns. Uh, uh, you're out of stuns. This is this, that, this is not good. Yeah. Let me see if I can crack. Oh, I have some more Pokeballs. Where are they? This is a situation. This is one of the situations of all time. If if I were in this situation, I'd be full on panicking. So I don't know how you're holding it together. That'll be fine. You did catch two of them. Just catch it back. Okay, well that doesn't help too. Go for clap. Yeah, let's go check. Yeah. Alright, this is the clapper run. It's gonna happen. <laughs> also, they, it's they, they uh, all of these fast. slots where you see Clefairy. It's a ten percent chance to be Clefun. For those that are uh, Means, not in never the happen. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, we got oh, one. one. It took me spray. so long to get Cleffa casually. It was horrible. Oh my god, it saw me. Whatever. All right, well, never mind. Rip Cleffa. <laughs> Dream's dead. If I leave it alone, it might stay. Uh, except for the fact that I no lie. longer see it. I think I already oh, it's over there. Oh, no, it's, no, it's over there. there. Love that you have enough raspberries that you can just afford to throw them all. Can you, like, do you mind? <laughs> that was the Rosalio is just like, this one's mine now. This is my food. Let me hurry up. <laughs> this is gonna, it's gonna no longer be night in a moment. Yeah, Clefairies that are that pretty that bad. That will despawn the Clefa. Nice. Hey, feed Clefa one more time. Hope it gets into a Pokeball. A lot of balls there. Yeah. <clears throat> that just sucks to be me then, I guess. It, it, it did not get yeah. in. I didn't Try again. Yeah, if you I don't have a catch, uh, you don't get any credit for any of your reasons. All right, there we go. All right, there you go. That literally barely worked out. Okay, I need more. Pokeballs, though. This apricorn's over uh, there. <laughs> Good getting lord. Light out, it's, it's getting light outside, Hulk. Yeah, we're probably missing this, Travis. Like, I literally just don't have time. Um, let's craft some more Pokeballs. This is a little bit mongous here, but this is what we signed up for. You can always go for Voltorb. Yeah, with my one, uh, where is that? One scatterbang. Oh, sorry, my zero scatterbang. <laughs> zero scatterbang. Okay, well, then that right. doesn't work. Um, Flux Ray. Rotom. Teleport back. Genius. Rotom. Is this Rondor. faster, Helk? I've always been running around. Geodos. Yeah, it's a little bit faster. Okay, these are Geodes. Nah, these are time. not okay. mysterious. Just catch all 28 unknown. That would work. Well, I'm technically saving time because there's no... Uh... There's no, uh, There's no Pokemon to catch. Go, yeah. go back to Myerlands and go get all of the Abras. Or the, the Raltzes, that's what I meant. Honestly, I think with um with uh, Cleffa and, Clef and Clefairy will be fine. Hopefully. Remember Raltzes? I did, I did uh, that shit Gold was as the well. Worst. It'll be fine. Apologies. The Raltz. I love how somebody said something about etiquette and etiquette got timed out. <laughs> I was going to say, why did I get It's because you're, you're uh, encouraging it. I think yeah, it's more that the name is with like your, with easy your enough With your silence, to you're grab. standing by it. <laughs> like, depending on your chat client, what can happen is uh, you click a name. If you try to click a username, that gets mentioned, it will open up that person's name, that the like the mentioned person's name instead of the person who said it. <laughs> 1984. I need to see what they said. <laughs> also, this fight is one of the fights of all time. Melly 3v1s you. Yeah, that's because. That's e because yes, uh, uh huh, yeah. That's because yeah, that's because uh -huh. Melly rules. Yeah, uh huh. And this fight sucks. Yeah, everyone criticizes Melee, but Sabby literally does the same thing later. Yeah, exactly. 
That fight was real bad because as a bird enjoyer, my entire team was birds. I like these extra flamethrowers so, as a uh, non-stun tank would... stunner. Okay. Also, I just uh, want to say... That fight was really hard with my team of birds. <laughs> Every time I send out a Yan Mega, uh, the flamethrower just always kills me from fall. So it's nice to see a Yan Mega live. Yeah, in, th in this fight, it's actually worthy to get rid of the minions, the Skarupi and the Zubat, because they'll agile style. And it does that weird thing where it not it agile style doesn't speed them up, it slows you down. Yeah, it's and generally worth it to get rid of the minions first because of that. My casual wor tip for you at home. Yeah, my my worst melee fight. I think I got put to sleep somehow or something, or like got paralyzed or something. And with not being able to move, uh, melee got I want to say in the realm of like fourteen turns in a row, and I had no attacks. <laughs> and it was just like, what is going on? I don't know if I'm mad at Melly or more impressed that you lived 14 turns. <laughs> no, I I lost like like. Well, you lose all two, the Pokemon, but yeah, you lose all the Pokemon. The worst is like one of a, like one of your Pokemon goes down, so then you send out your next Pokemon, which usually you get the initiative, and then he attacked again, and then I Did just I already lost, I and I was I like, oh, right? yeah, you got you definitely got two Skunt Tanks. I don't think okay, you have. We're done, with, we're done with Skun Tank then because he used three flamethrowers. <laughs> Flamethrower is a double point task for a Skun Tank. Alright, that's on. It's Electro time. Yes, this is May's specialty. This is my specialty. Electro if you ever want to learn how to do the Electro uh, IL, but like out of date, I made a guide for it way back when. Um, so, our goal here is to, again, as. Uh, Help explain if you want to defeat Electrode before the tactical nuke. So it's going to like spit out these eight. So we're going to do two things at the beginning. It's going to drop those orbs. You don't want to get hit by them. Thank you for showing off getting hit by them. <laughs> Show off what you don't want to do. Um, it's and then it's going, to, it. it's going to spit the, uh, the beams out at you, right? And um, we, we are intentionally going to tank those because they don't knock us down, but they do stagger you for a second. You want to make sure that you want to try to get hit right as our right between your throw cycle so that you don't lose throw time, then essentially we just pace around it, avoiding the orbs, because they do fall in a consistent pad. And part of our goal, too, is uh, we want to um, get all the way around it, because if we get all the way around it, uh, it has to rotate around to face us before it does the next phase, and that gives us the time for another throw. And then by finishing it off here, we finish it before it jumps up and does the tactical move. Yep, and I finished the boss it, as fast as you explained it. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. If you don't defeat it before that, you it does like this big explosion. It's extremely hard to get out of the range, and it takes forever for it to go off anyways. Uh, if it hits you, you are set to 1 HP and stunned for like 10 seconds as you just have to wait there as it cools down. And then um, you have about one throw before it fires a homing ball at you, and you lose. I got hit by one uh, one Voltorb, so I was afraid I was going to get nuked, but luckily I didn't. You have so much time, though, for... Because uh, you had, like, three or four throws of leeway still. Because, again, you can, you, can, you can finish it. Yeah, you still throw, with, ball, think, throw bombs in the air, and it, it has a hitbox right above you, so... Yeah. And, like, again, you can fit... Even if you get hit by one, you have, you have over eight throws of leeway because that's how long you have in the post game, so because the AI is the same. Why well, can go do Chingling? <laughs> Love Chingling. Or you could just have 8,500 points and be or on our I merry could, way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll check first and then I'll come back if I, uh, if I need more points. I probably need more points because uh, yeah, the M has really screwed me over. How in the world did you stay that calm? Because you've coached me and you've seen how frantic I get. <laughs> I was uh, like, ah. I mean, I just, I, I know that I'll find a way out of it. <laughs> I just, I know what I need to do if things right. are wrong. Fingers crossed, like 8,500. I don't, there's no point in doing that. Oh. I have 500 points away, oh my god. 520 short. You have 34. Okay, so here's the thing. 
Here's a th 34. Okay, yeah. hold on. I got this. Uh, search by research level. Uh, I didn't finish Cleffa. Uh, That's okay. a I didn't finish Yanma either. I knew I didn't finish Hippotas. How did I finish Yanma? Okay, I'll evolve Yanma, then I'll finish Yanma. I'm gonna go finish Hippotas, and then I guess I'll try to finish Cleffa. Oh, I'll do. All right, here's the plan. Um, I don't know why I'm running over here, but I'll evolve my Yanma. That'll give me 120 points. And then um, I'm going to go finish Hippotas, which will give me like another 120 points or so. Um, and then I'll just do Miss Magius, or Miss Mistrevis, not Miss Magius. Okay. Um, front gate. So just play another 100? Uh, Mistrevis will be a full 200. And then yeah, I can maybe, maybe do right? the Chingling also. Was it 540? Is there Hippotas on this map? Oh, 520. Oh, it's 520. No, it is 5. It was 520. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of Hippotas. They're they're basically right before the Toxic Croak. Mm -hmm. There's like they're they're with uh and then like an adult hip like hip out on. It'll take a little bit of time. Sorry, hip on, Yeah. Good thing you got that zoo bat worth 60 points. Sure helped a lot, did they? Oh. <laughs> they're dead. Oh, just get dust top. I guess I'll have some Pokeballs. Wait, no, I should not do that. I should go over here. I thought you were about to show off the cool strat to get the whip. Oh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> now that nothing matters anymore. Um, do it, yes. Wait, I passed it. Hold on. And jump over here. Ah, uh, intended. All right, I found that strat. That's why I mentioned it. I like didn't even pick up the whisk. No, it's slow. Well, that's slow. <laughs> As if doing, doing all of that was fast. not slow, yeah. Yeah. It's also just caught my attention that it's not nighttime. I don't have a good way to set it to nighttime. It might be here for a little bit. That's OK. Uh, here's the hip out ons by the way. Or the hip you, you, you didn't finish right on, right? Uh, you never, no, I did, I did finish Rayhorn. I, I yeah, you, you stunned four. Oh, right. All right, we're done with Hippowdon. All right, Hippowdon's now. Uh, Hippowdon can be done. It's just kind of hard. Um, because uh, you need stun items. I don't have any stun items. I was coming over here to do Chingling. I've done chicken wing as a backup before, it is sad. Very sad. What do you do to finish chicken wing? Oh, Psycho! Uh, just feed it a lot. Feed five, catch two, I think. No wonder I've never done that before. I've also, like, never been this way. I'm very lost right now. Oh. Oops, whatever. There could be three chinglings here, but there's probably only two. Oh, no, there's three. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if I can feed all three at once, though, because once you go too far off screen, um, you, uh, the Pokemon stops, like, being updated by the game. Okay, five and catch two. Okay. Eat the Hopo Bear. Okay, that is it for Chingling. Then, then one and a half for ish. All right, now I'm gonna go back and <laughs> set nighttime and go get uh, Mistrevis and buy some more Pokeballs. When we do backups in RCS, we do backups. <laughs> like a lot of them. Like I said way at the beginning, it's very easy for like something weird to happen and then you have to recover because something breaks out or something sees you or mm -hmm. you get crit or you don't get enough stun items or... Speaking of something seeing me, that's a legitimate worry here because part of finishing Mistrevis is not being seen. I only have like one stealth spray left. I just or buy 14 more. dust, oh, well, dust toxins right. break out. Well, I'll just I buy more. I love that for, uh, just 
random turnaround. Three more? Oh my god. And you catch three, two of them unspotted. So. That two one of them me. definitely looked at you. Well, one of them broke out, so that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> that one pieced oh, this out. This one's up here. Okay. That second one I caught did not see me. This one has given up on seeing me. That's probably fine. Got bored. Okay. That should be enough points. Is that enough? Surely. Um, let's see this actually. One fun thing we didn't mention throughout the course of the run is that the uh, the catching animation, the Pokeball can either do like a small hop or like a really big hop. If it does a small hop, we it guaranteed to be caught. Oh so yeah. When you that, yeah, when you see, when you see that. that small hop and if Hulk like turns away and starts running in the other directions, because we already know that that one's gonna be caught. That was way too many. Okay. Uh, good job. Okay. 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 Not quite the time I would like to have left that area, but we'll be fine. Okay. Now I need to buy some more materials for uh, stealth sprays because I absolutely need them. I should check Ginter first since he can just have them, but. I mean, he oh, is your buddy. Time with being wrong. He is my buddy, just... but he's let me down twice already. Both, <laughs> both of the shops, <laughs> uh, both of the inventories I checked of his were absolute garbage. You got Razzes. I guess. And I guess they did help on the Cleffas. I'm just happy the Cleffa didn't run away. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, yeah. Normally, if a Pokemon gets like aggroed like that and they're a, <clears throat> they're a skittish type, there's a chance if you just don't pursue them and just leave them alone that they'll stay. And they'll just forget about it. Pokemon have memory that exists in like two second intervals. The second they're in and the second they just left. So if you just give them enough time to calm down, they'll forget who you are. Now, not doing Dust Talks was kind of me being kind of lazy. Not doing Finion was completely bad RNG. Um, was there anything else I didn't get? I didn't get Chadot because um, the Sfeels were a little bit trolly. They kept breaking out. That was already a tight cycle anyway, so... You don't expect Chadot. But you expect Dust Talks. <laughs> so, that kind of things off. Did you eventually get Beautifly's? Did yes. you finish that after throwing balls at, like, nine of them? Yes, I did finish that. <laughs> to, to catch two? Yeah, luckily that did get finished. This has been an interesting run. Normally all my bad luck happens at the end, so... Well, now we're home free, basically. Mm hmm Like the end game. Yeah, we can still... I think we still get underestimate. And need to not make any more mistakes. Or hit any more rough patches of bad luck. No more nine ball dialgas, please. Twelve ball dialga, okay. Well, you only get ten. Ten ultra balls. Ten that... ball dialga. You have to use, to use mesh pokeballs. Yeah, so in one of my first marathon runs of this game, um, it took me nine ultra balls to catch dialga and red health. And, uh, Nine Ultra Balls, um, and uh, if you're doing the math, that does mean nine turns of trying to catch Dialga, which means I probably died, and you'd be correct, I did die. And when you die or uh, accidentally kill Dialga, you watch a one-minute cutscene explaining how bad it is to kill Dialga, <laughs> then you get put back into the fight. <laughs> I didn't know uh, the cutscene was that long. It's exactly a minute long, yeah. The game's just like, imagine being this unlucky. <laughs> Try harder. You get pulled out of the fight, and then Commodore's just like, cringe. <laughs> Go back in there. <laughs> he, he yells at you for your he over skill issue. He doesn't even give you any more Ultra Balls <laughs> if you run out, like, or if you use a lot of them. Because I used nine, and he didn't replenish my stash at all. Because he, he gave you all the ones he had, and you wasted them on your bad RNG. I don't, don't want to hear it. <laughs> he, uh, he threw my run for me. You gotta have better switch entropy. <laughs> True. <laughs> My switch is so old. That's probably a real factor. I've had this one since 2017. 
Same with the controller, but the controller is aged very well because it's uh, lost its snapback, I guess. But that's the thing with GameCube controllers. They have a thing called PODE, um, where like it's basically the controller gets weird, like worn down and stops reading the way it was factory originated to read inputs. And the benefit of that is that it stops having snapback. <laughs> I'm thinking that might be similar to what happened with the Pro Controller, I don't know. That makes sense. Oh, thank god we gotta turn one psychic. Yeah, it's like 20 seconds. Oh safe. no, Shinx! I really thought oh, Shinx no, had you this. Died. Oh no, you Oh no! It's so disrespectful when these level 46 Pokemon start setting up on you. You're like, <laughs> I am a Shinx. I died to a breath. Like, just just put me out of my misery, please. They just have random AI? Do we know? It's... it's something. I don't know if it's random, because there's some fights that are very consistent. Like, um, Might just depend on the trainer. Like the Toxicroak uh, in Crimson Mirelands will always use um, uh, Venishock. Venishock because it can't hit Mud Bomb on Stravia, so we're kind of manipulating that. But I, I want to believe it had more than two moves at that point. I'm sure there's some third move it's not using on us. I haven't really looked into its move set though, so it could just have those two moves. Maybe it's also ground type. <laughs> Maybe it's also ground type. Yeah. Okay, so this is Alabaster Icelands. Uh, we're actually completely done with research now. We do not need to complete any more research. However, we will be catching a couple more Pokemon that are going to be helping us in the endgame. We're going to be catching a Glalie, a Rufflet, and a super secret Alpha that is extremely powerful and scary that's going okay, to so uh, completely obliterate the field. So we're using this version of the run. Alpha Drifloon, finally. Finally. <laughs> finally. I don't even think Drifloon's here. And if it's it not, not, and if it's no. not here, we'll just catch an Alpha Pumpkaboo. That's in this game. Um, I need it's a, definitely a in this game. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that's all you need. Okay. Inven uh, inventory okay. management is a thing in this game. God, the game's just getting so many slowdowns. Oh. oh my god, I was mashing A and didn't take it. Shady uh, has been using Turbo for his for his runs recently, and he was holding Turbo A, and he still did not get it as fast as possible right there. Are you trying to grab that wall? There's our orb. <laughs> Ew, that's such a low level. I hope it breaks out. Fine. <laughs> that's such a low level. Oh my god. Of course. That's literally the lowest level it can be. We'll be fine. It's just it's, it's just fine. Not ideal. Yo, is that a super secret alpha right there? Yes, this is our super secret destroyer of worlds alpha. Uh, that will contribute to us beating this game much faster. <laughs> Giant Sneasel, to be fair. That thing is so large. Right, okay. It's it's bigger than the very, Sneasler. Very large creature, for sure. And we're gonna be using them immediately. Yeah, the Alpha Sneasel run uh, end game is is pretty busted. Um, the uh, Hisuian Sneasel is basically Krogunk typing. It's poison fighting. And Sneasel's move is Close Combat, which is a very strong move, and it gets the same type attack bonus multiplier as well. So it is. It also has Poison Gem. Incredibly good. It has Poison Gem too. And then uh, the, when we need it to die, it dies quickly because it is a Sneasel, and it is quad weak to Psychic. Or not quad weak, two point two five weak to Psychic or whatever it is. Thanks, Game Freak, for just doing that. Okay, and it comes with a random move. That's false. Yo, Etiquette, here. it's your favorite Pokemon. It's on screen. Yay. Yeah, so the top move in the move set of any alpha is a random move from the move tutor. Uh, you can get Shadow Claw to make this fight a turn faster on the Frostlass, but because we don't have it, we're going to have to use Poison Jabs. Which isn't too bad, it's just two turns. And uh, we actually don't mind the Sneasel taking more damage anyway, because we're going to be sacking it in the next fight. So, some would argue <laughs> that it's worse to get the Shadow Claw. Because 
your sneeze will take way less damage that way. And if some of you are wondering if you should be taking notes uh, for the end game, the answer is don't because the route's changed. <laughs> and there's the some different strats. Changed, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this is still the backup strat if you don't get a haunter from the previous area. Um, it's not that much faster. It's like 40 seconds faster at, at like at best. I think the uh, I think also the idea is you can get to this area and not have to catch anything. Well, that, that's uh, the, then, yeah, that's the whole idea of it. It's the only reason. Because like Shady was saying, uh, disregarding that it's it breaks even, but that saves like 20 seconds, and then because um, if you don't catch anything, you don't have any research to hand into the professor, and that's actually a handful of screens of be like, here's what you caught. Here's now what yeah, your Pokedex you looks like. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you don't go through any of that. How do you get your, your Sneasel? You actually catch the Sneasel in Area 4. Yeah, you catch uh, two Sneasels in Coronet, and you run those. So your team but, is... But not Gastrodon. the ones that... Not the ones that you see right away, because those are only like level forty something. You actually go by. We passed. I think passed by some of them. Yeah, we were that are like in the fifties. Um, where the Gyaradoses were, there's like a lake there, and those are in the fifties, like T Pat said. It was very important for me to run all the way to the Pearl Settlement there and get that work point. Uh, I missed that on getting the first ever sub four because I did not do that. And uh, it's going to be a crucial warp. That's pretty much where we need to go after we climb this cliff. Otherwise, we are a very long way away. It's weird to think I struggled so hard for sub four, and this run is still going to be sub four. <laughs> I hate that mishap. Well, I mean, that. there's been a little bit of development since then. Yeah, yeah, the strats have changed. It's just Don't uh, worry. It's, it's interesting to look back on that that was such a problem. And now, like, we're, we're at, in realistic sub-340 territory. Don't worry, I'll steps. get sub-4 eventually. I believe in you. I, I appreciate... Uh, well, I, I mean, you just don't play the game really as much as I do. I don't recommend anybody play the game as much as I do. <laughs> I don't recommend <laughs> how I got good at this game at all. All right, watch Hulk run up this cliff. Yeah, there's Good like job. some geometry there that Weirdo just has no trouble going up and over. Um, it is a weird deer. A very weird deer indeed. Um, Etiquette's there's favorite a part way. of climbing is when you get on like a small little patch where where the Sneasler can like yes. be like, I can stand here. There are like these little ledges that are like three pixels wide and it's like, oh, I can just stand here. And then it takes like four seconds for it to actually register that you want to climb again. My favorite thing is when uh, you're like kind of close to a wall and then Sneasler prompt overrides literally everything in the game. Like going into I'm a door. Like, yeah, and you climb the door instead of, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And it just ruins your wheel too, because now the wheel's stuck on, uh, on Sneasler. I love that when we get here, a lot of people are just like, hey, did you know that you can get to the top of Snowpoint Temple? by doing some geometry stuff and it's like yeah after you have braviary which we don't have right now yeah there's an exploit with braviary where you double tap plus and then press x and then double tap plus again you slowly 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 gain height eventually it's enough to get on top of snowpoint temple but, i mean it is once you have braviary <laughs> so uh etiquette actually taught me a very very easy way to remember uh, the puzzles in snowpoint temple and i've literally been following it. it i've been following it to a t ever since i heard them and i've never forgotten them if you want to explain them can i remember them wait hold on uh, the first one is a medical condition oh yeah the the first one so all right all the the symbols here it's rock ice and steel um and so the first one is this game gives you rsi so that's the order when you play with no turbo, really yeah. Does. Um, the second one is if you don't pay your taxes, the IRS of Rhode Island comes right. after you. There's a wisp um, there, by the way. And then the third one, there isn't a really good one, but you can you can make up a person and call him Sir Icer. He's like the Thank ruler you. of this land. Yeah, before this, I was just like glued to my spreadsheet at this point, and I just was... Now looking R as I and like it's not ideal. 
I still use, like, refer to the notes for puzzles that I know by heart just because I'm like, but what if I get it wrong? Like the... Like in, in the, the, well, you just account uh, for being wrong. Like, when I when I go here, I'm going to go uh, through Nevermind uh, to get to Steel because I'd rather mess it up and hit Nevermind than yeah. mess it up and have to press B on it. Or mess it up and have to pr press Nevermind anyway. I'd rather the mistake kick me out of the menu. <laughs> So I can get started faster. Um, but yeah, like like the the warp puzzle with the master ball and uh, the aqua hideout. I like, I very much know where to go, but I still look at my notes because I'm like, but what if I forgot where to go? Uh huh. You got yeah, shouted. Oh, yeah, that was the alpha. Uh, that was the alpha I mentioned. Uh, makes the end game of catch them all extremely extremely easy. There's some strats with the twice spice radishes you get from the spirit team quest, and uh, on top of that, you can stack it with ox power guards. And it completely melts that uh that end game fight. Ox items, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Never use them casually. Me neither. I, most of the items in this game that we use for speedruns, I didn't know existed until Shady told me to use them in speedruns. I knew all these items existed, but I was like, but I have to save them. What if I need them? For speedruns. Well, I only have twenty three elixirs. What if I need them? Yeah, the only ones that I end up using was um. Belt, or smoke bombs. There's a lot of smoke bombs. Yeah, so we're gonna strong. Wow, you're getting, right you're getting you're getting three one again. That's amazing. But this one's much better. This one was horrible for me. This is cooler than when Melly did it. Oh. Yeah, at least these Pokemon are cool and not a Scroopy. Just kind of tank and see that. Scroopy's cool. It's Maybe literally cool. it's literally Team Skull from Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky and minus the, just with a Scroopy subbed in for coughing. That's not what I think of when I think of Team Skull. I was definitely like... Well, Gen 7 came out no. a long time after Mr. Gen Explorers of Sky. I'm aware. Sure <laughs> I would say about say Team Skull five or and six I didn't years. Think of okay, so um, somebody was mentioning earlier that uh, Gastron completely walls out this fight. Poison Gas is one of the two things that Ma Magmortar can do to you, the other being Flamethrower. And this Electivire has an entirely electric moveset. So it literally is... He loves uh, his stab moves. <laughs> It's completely walled by uh, Gastronom. Doesn't the wild one also have only electric moves? Well, that's just that's just its level of moveset. Like, they didn't change the movesets to have any, like, custom moves or move tutor moves. They just kind of threw them in there at the levels that they would normally be at and, like, with their default moves. Um, so the Glalie's going to come in handy right now, actually. So we're going to have to fight the Braviary before we get it, just like Ursaluna. And, and the Braviary um, is a Psychic type now. Yes, it's Flying Psychic. So it's literally just a Galarian Articuno. Or whatever, whatever one of the Galarian birds is Psychic type. Or Zatu. Or Zatu. Zatu's lame, so... I do forget Galarian that Lugia is... How dare you! Alright, Strong Ice Crash is a 100% guaranteed kill. Maybe not at this level, Zatu I actually don't remember. <laughs> I think Zatu's my favorite Pokemon that starts with X. Yeah, I think so too. Zerk well, well, Tree. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't like Zerk Tree or Xerneas. Xerneas is alright. I like Xerneas. Xerneas is, is a pretty design and that's literally it. It's also extremely good. Yeah, Geomancy's kinda of sword and shield. And BGC. Zashin's like, hey, I exist. That's true. And Xerneas is like, oh. Oh yeah, Sigilyph too. Guess I'll die. I remember when um, Black and White 2 came out. Uh, I think Dream Raider came out before that. Um, so I was, I was um, committed to like, using like a, a an alt starter that I caught in Dream Raider. And I decided to use a Sigilyph that I caught that had like the hidden ability instead of using the the Snivy I got. <laughs> Dream Raider was really fun. I wish they brought it back or had some kind of like sequel to it. Gotta wait for the um for the for Pokemon Black and White version three. Oh, I can't let's wait. Go style. Let's go. Yeah. Unova. Let, let's go, Unova. Let's go, Unova. Would be the most powerful thing they could possibly do. <laughs> yeah, that's why we All said right, it. So anybody with vertigo or fear of heights, I. I, I uh, implore. This is literally a bungee jump out of an airplane. You, 
you look away from the screen for the next like minute or so because this will not be pleasant to look at. We're it gonna still fall me. <laughs> We're gonna fall a long way down. I keep thinking like, okay, now, and Hulk is like, you can go, you can go farther. Wait, 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 uh... wait, 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 wait there. <laughs> Might be a little low. Oh. It lo it looks so scary. I have died Fine. so many times in this game from doing exactly that and timing it wrong. By the way, Braviary is, while you might say, oh, this is our flyer, well, Braviary doesn't exactly fly so much as it just glides. And um, you may have noticed that um, when I switched to uh, Braviary, I double tap the start button that it basically skips the ascension. That was found by shenanigans, actually. Then you can show off another little trick, which is uh, like, I think it's tapping the B button and it kind of like oh, I already did, wiggles I already in there. Did it there. Um, basically, you if did you, it a little uh, bit. Yeah, I was really a little worried about my height. Um, if you uh, if you kind of just like tap B, tap, 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 you can preserve your height. You don't actually fall at all. So it's very good if you're, if you're like, you know, barely like not clear something. And the best way to, to de like to descend is to switch between Weirdy and Braviary. Because using Braviary's yeah, dive right, function. All the time. Yeah, using Braviary's dive function is a little bit slow. Because I don't think you're moving at top speed when you do it. When you do that and you switch from Weirdier back to Braviary, are you just tapping the left right button? Yeah, on the D-pad. Yeah. You can press A if you want to for Braviary. But I mean, my, my hand's already on the D-pad, so. And it, it's kind of awkward because um, switching mounts, there's a little bit of a delay between you pressing the D-pad button and actually doing it. Um, but it's 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 consistent, so you can learn the delay and play around it. Okay, so here's Avalug. And uh, I mentioned Avalug's earlier, fun. this is the only noble that you can skip the rage we call it rage um like roar of when they are raged you cannot do damage to them and yeah, they so yell I'll, at I'll you. try to explain it while i'm doing it but the fight is a little bit hard i mean there is a part of this fight uh, oh my god i should have played the cutscene actually because it's just it's comically it's, it's large silly. so big. it's, it's, look it's how bigger big than he is. he's bigger, oh, he's bigger than dimax pokemon yeah. So there's actually a part of this fight um, that I'm gonna be playing less optimally. Because I'm gonna be stalling for a certain attack to happen before I get him below half. So you can you can either take those, be time it right, and just get staggered, or you can avoid them. These uh, the those the, the position of those ice poles is based on where you're currently standing. So you just kind of just straight left to right, you're fine. Uh, these you just dive into. Fine. At the right time, and you're fine. Or you get hit by him. That also works. Uh, so the reason I waited so long to throw is because um, when even if he hasn't done his rage uh, shout yet, Avalug, when he's below health, uh, half health, and his uh, ice cool attack starts, he will shoot them way faster to where there's no time in between to throw bombs. So we delay and wait until um, he's started the attack, and he can't change the speed of it anymore. I was one that. bomb away. Oh, I never kind of hit my icicles. Oh well. But it's it's always faster, I believe, in the, the fast version than the the post game one. So I wasn't actually like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's um, Avalog. Imagine Dynamax. Yeah, that, that makes sense for a Avalog that they made that harder. Yeah. I only did the rematch of this to get the boss rush world record before the IL people got it. <laughs> And like a week after Fair. I did my boss rush run, like Ray just destroyed it and I just have no chance <laughs> ever having that ever again. Cause I got like a 1425 and he's like, hmm, cool, hold this 1147. Just in I IGT on the boss times. I like Star, I was like, oh, I should do boss rush. And then I was like, wait a minute, I love resetting. I'm like really good at just like, uh, I'm not consistent, but I can get good times if I put enough time into it. So I was well, like, I mean, you, you start with like, you start with Dialga or Palkia, I think, because they have attacks that are really, really bad if you get bad RNG. Yeah. 
That's what I always did anyway. Also, we were talking about how Ingo, like, is a random Gen 5 person here. It's like, and yet we have an ancestor to Wolfric from Gen 6, like, right behind, uh, <laughs> right over there. Like, that's true. It took me forever to realize that he was, I was like, who is he supposed to be from? And I couldn't figure it out. I was like, is he Crash or Wake? And it's like, no, you got to think two <laughs> gens forward. It's, it's, it's Wolfric. So what kind yeah, there's of a lot of there's a lot of random uh, ancestries. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. get to see Wally's ancestor. In yeah, a that was bit. the one I didn't realize was Wally's ancestor. Wait, really? Wally's goes, ancestor? Benny. Yeah, it's Benny because he has a Glade and a Gardevoir and green hair. Oh, he has oh. very hair. similar hairstyles. Yeah. Hey, it bugs like... me that there's a Mars and Saturn ancestor, but no Jupiter. No, it bugs a me a lot. Wait. Is Jupiter not one of the like the thief girls? No, or is no it that's, yeah, you're thinking cool. of Saturn. Which one's Jupiter? Oh, because it's, it's Saturn, the pink Candace, hair? and uh, Bertha Agatha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Amber, if you want to have any any more announcements, this is gonna be a great time. Yeah, this we're is going quite into quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of lore. Yeah, cutscene the video game here. Um, just want to remind y'all that you were awesome for being here and we appreciate your support, your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, your gift subs, your bits, all of that stuff cheered on the Twitch channel here. Help support weekly hotfix content. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy these weekly hotfix shows. You also get some really awesome, adorable Velocity emotes. Do recommend. Uh, you also get Shen Bulba, also a great emote. Um, really? And if you've missed most of this run, it's going to be up on YouTube in the next couple of days. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. If you're interested in looking at our live content, you'll find us starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we also have an Instagram. Uh, that's pretty new to me. Uh, check out at gamesdonequick on Instagram to get bite-sized clips from our hotfix shows and see what happens at the events. And that would be pretty cool to see behind the scenes. And uh, lastly, uh, if you like Never Before Seen, uh, this is my one show I have this month because in two weeks from now, what would have been my show is now Flame Fatales, happening from August 21st to the 27th. Uh, it will be our next all-women speedrunning event from the Frame Fatale series, and the schedule is out for that right now. If you type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com forward slash Frame Fatales, you'll get more info. Prize submissions are open. If you want to submit a prize, check out the website. And also, uh, the schedule is pretty stacked, if you, if I do say so myself. Uh, Corva May here. there's a typing uh, game in there. Also has a, yeah, there's a typing. No, that's Odat. That's one and done. That's Odat. Yeah, one and done of them. One and done a thumb. I'm doing the best it's Pokemon game. The, That's the, all the I can game think you, about. The game you thought she was going to submit for one and done a thon is actually in Flame Fatales. Yes. The game that I probably should have submitted for one and done a thon is actually in Flame Fatales. I, I mean, honestly, the... if you had swapped the the, uh, the submissions, it probably would have been more logical to everyone else. But no, no, no. Like chaotic. Uh, well, chaotic one good. FF. Is is when FF um, submissions were open, I uh, was not currently running it. So. Oh, okay. And I was having technical problems with that game that I have since. Look, just because Corv May's only run allowed in ODAT is going to be Pokemon Typing Adventure, that does not mean exactly. we will never see Pokemon Typing Look, Adventure got... ever again. Somebody else will That's pick true. it up and run it as their only one run. <laughs> one and done. Dethroned me. I got the leader. I got the leaderboard sweep last or two weeks ago. That's just... a hard dethrone because like you only get that one chance, and that's your only. No, I meant. Thing. Well, no, on the on the leaderboard, you can. Oh, you I thought you meant in uh, in one and done a thon runs. Like no, no, no. you do your one and done a thon run, and you challenge somebody else to do it better than you in one and done a thon, and basically waste their That'd one and done a thon slot <laughs> just for the the challenge. Also, do not touch anything on the joystick here. You will soft lock the game if you walk past Celine. Huh? <clears throat> really? Uh, you soft? Yeah, you soft lock the game yeah. if you walk past. You can interact with the game while it's while it's black. I never mentioned that. Um. Like in the earlier in the run, I was using the camera. I was turning the camera while the game hadn't loaded in yet. Um, but that also applies to walking in this cutscene. And if you walk past Celine, she'll keep telling you, "Come on, we gotta go. Come on, we gotta go." Even though you're ahead of her, and she won't let you get behind her. 
So you're literally soft locked. You can't even access the menu at this point, so you have to close the game. Oof. I also got like irrationally mad at this part of the story. I got really mad at what's his face. This, this, is the, them. this is the part of uh, the story where you get banished and you can't return until you've captured the avatar. <laughs> Basically, yeah. That was, I, I mentioned earlier this game stole some story beats from PMD, and this is definitely one of them. Getting banished is like a common thing, or that, getting, that's like getting the stuck. First, that's the first plot point of the original PMD Red Blue. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, if you haven't played Mr. Ninja, you should definitely go play this game. It's a really good. You're on the run from Team ACT, which I always thought was a very clever team nickname. Mm -hmm. they, they think they're so smart. And yeah, they heard some bad things about you and they had to act on it. I'll see myself up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so one other thing you can do um, while you're while the game's not loaded in, for some reason you can act you can, you can open the map while the game is black here. Uh, it won't do anything. You cannot warp or choose anything. You can hear but you can hear map noises, and that's pretty much it. That I did like, know. Yeah, I'm I'm playing with the map in the black screen right now. <laughs> All right, there we go. <clears throat> you can hear the noises of me interacting with the map, but no matter what I did, I would not have been able to warp while the game was not loaded. It's just noise, and that's it. Yeah, so there's a category in this game called All Lords, which ends when you beat uh, Say plug. the Avalog. I, I forgot to give Avalog there for a second. <laughs> it's late. Um, and the reason why that category exists is we are fully in the story zone. And there yeah, is a lot train, of story. Like a train track story right now. We got it. Well, no, you, you you have choices. You can pick where you go to, or which order you catch the spirit. The, the oh, true. Letter trio. Amber, Your if you have any matter. more, uh, if you have any more things you want to announce, this is a long cutscene. <laughs> All right. So I don't have anything else to <laughs> announce that I haven't already said. But uh, did you know that this game is really heckin' awesome? That is my announcement. It's uh, this is a game is heckin' on awesome. The, uh, on the eShop. There was a little while ago where it was on sale in the PAL region, so keep a lookout. They put these things on sale like quite often. While there's a whole lot of story going on now for this category, uh, now is actually the best time if you're doing catch em alls. Oh, wait, hold on. Team, to we got to get through. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. We got Shink's dialogue. Okay, go ahead. Er, er. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention yeah. while we have the, uh, the, the what is deemed the RBG guy. Uh, actually ma uh, makes the distortions a little bit more likely to form quicker. So now's like a good time to farm for that and catch them all categories. Uh, you mentioned that the timing of the distortions are either 5, 10, 15, 25, or 40 minute intervals. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes the five minute distortions slightly more likely. So now's yeah, it the switches time to the probability increase in the first two stages. Like five and 10 have their probabilities switched. So what would normally be 10% for a five minute is now 20%. Also, uh, to t Pat's dismay, there was no weather in this uh, scenario. Yeah. It was uh, completely clear. This is, uh, <laughs> this is when being this a meteorologist is... becomes a bit more challenging because now your producers give you four minutes for your weather hits, and you're like, well, there's just RBG sky. Like, how do I describe <laughs> that for the next four like minutes? If, I'll open up the map real quick. But if you look at the map, it'll where there will normally be weather in the top left corner. There's just that little space symbol. Yeah. That, that's this your is, weather. This is actually... It, 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 looks like a a ending. <laughs> it looks like a typhoon to be on. <laughs> Imagine putting that icon on a seven-day forecast for It looks like, like how weather stations days. like report like hurricanes. Like, that's how they represent yeah. hurricanes. <laughs> This is actually the true ending for Pokemon Emerald where Rayquaza wins and there's no weather. Gosh, yeah, Cynthia. it's a, we're just it's full Delta stream right now. Exactly. I'm just the effects like, of weather are gone. I'm like, gosh, Cynthia, why do you get two ancestors? Well, Real. she I, I can explain it. She gets two so that Melly can have zero. Wow. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> I had to go. It was really this, important. This, 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 
This couch is toxic. Of all the things that have been said in today's broadcast, that was the most true. I don't, I don't diss your blurbos. Yeah, Melly. So the problem with Melly, right, is the only redemption Melly gets as a character in the post game is uh, in the form of the funniest line the game ever delivers. Uh, it's spoiler so alert: Cresselia is in this game, <laughs> and it takes up residence in Electrode's area. And when you go to that area, Melly's like, "Please take care of that flying croissant that's taking up space here." <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> And it just, it's, it's so good. Incredible. But that, that is, that is the peak of Melly, and then it just goes back to being Melly. Which is a win. Uh, depending on who you ask. Anyways, uh, we're gonna select, uh, Adam in here, because Dialga is a little bit easier to deal with than Palkia. At least in the current route. But what happens if you select Irida? Uh, Irida has less she... text at the lakes. That's that's what I heard. I heard uh, Adamant has a lot to say about how his ancestor is something, 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 or whatever. Yeah, he like when you're fighting the Alpha Overquill, uh, he's like, oh, these are, these things are poisonous. My my dad told me that you know stay away from them. And Arita's like, oh, a fish. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, be careful. And you know, that's basically what she says for every every lake. I like uh, Irida's energy, like, ex very Midwestern energy of like going anywhere that isn't cold and being like, it's too hot. I swear to God. Yeah, that's. Uh, this is the cooler That's way why to I relate to, to her the energy. most. Uh, grab the wall, B. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought Bringer that was too work. back for some reason. There we go. So by doing this, you can climb the wall a little bit faster. Um, I did not expect to be just standing there. <laughs> Um, the geometry moment. So the problem people have with Braviary is that, um, or the problem with using that exploit in like literally any other scenario is that when you are on Braviary and you switch off of Braviary and you get on Braviary again, you don't get a second ascent. But the game counts you clinging onto the wall as like being grounded again for good reason. So once you dismount from the wall, you can get another ascent from Braviary. So basically, it tra it treats us touching the wall as touching the ground. By the way, in the story, we gotta go. We gotta go like do the three trials of the Lake Trio, which are of varying difficulty, I suppose. They're all easy. So this frame sucks. Oh, then sucks for each one, you also gotta. You also have to beat a fight. I forgot the fight. That's oh, the hard okay. part. Oh, okay. So I mentioned in the beginning of the run that we're gonna be using a, a numpad for this game. Yeah, this, three hours uh, ago. This 10, 10 what number numpad. Uh, uh, you have to wait a little bit longer, but we're almost there. Wait, does that that work? Yep. Yes, because it uses the Switch OS. Uh, any keyboard that's plugged in. Oh my god. Works. Hopefully this I, goes. I, I would have never thought of that. I didn't know you could just use a keyboard on the yeah. Switch. Any USB on the PlayStation 4. Only if it's the only if the game is using the Switch OS's keyboard. If yeah. For a game like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, where it uses its own in-game keyboard, you can't use it. I okay, just want to so say now, that I was I think I was commentating for etiquette doing this once. And yeah. he he gets to this point and you know, if you've ever done like Dynamax Adventures and you gotta type in your code and you gotta do it, you know, one at a time. Well, watch how fast this is going to come at you. Like you have to enter this five digit code and go. Done. Wow, that's way <laughs> that was, faster that than how I was doing it. That was a little bit slow, even. So, so have you ever considered running have you ever considered running Pokemon typing adventure? I've, I've, I've actually been interested in doing it for the one and done a fall next time that comes up. Whoa! So that I can have the better uh, Pokemon typing adventure one and done a thon run. So competitive. So I was so blown away with this that I went out of my way and have bought now a number. Let's go, T Pat! To run this game with. <laughs> I got this one for like $10, I think, on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, same. Uh, on Prime Day, I, I was like, oh, it's, I should just like, get this. Functionality aside, I think it's just a fantastic meme, and I would use it if it's even like slightly slower. It's gonna be really weird when the next person who visits me is just like, "Hey, cool numpad. Why are the six, <laughs> one, three, and zero keys really worn out?" <laughs> yeah, 
and, and, then gonna, gonna gonna, and then I'm gonna have to like explain them what to explain to them what speed running is and and everything, and they're like, so yeah, you spent ten dollars to be three seconds faster at one part of a yes, four hour God, game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What are you no. saying, Etiquette? I was gonna say my favorite part of that whole thing is that they did an instant replay of the numpad input <laughs> on the Wait, stream. For for what for what stream is this? For your stream just now. They did they did like yeah. an instant did replay. They? <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that. Very important. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, this is gonna make a great two, four, five, seven, eight, nine keypad someday. I cannot wait for when that I'm, to make the highlight. When I'm done with right, running Arceus <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Gotta get my value out of this numpad for sure. Gotta find another game that requires you to input the other numbers that don't get worn out. It's specifically. True. True. I'll, I'll be on the hunt. Don't worry. With my typing adventure, you have to use the keyboard that comes with it. It doesn't have a numpad, but other than that... Wait, you have to use a keyboard that comes with the game? Oh yeah, you don't know about this? Yeah, no. interfaces with the DS, right? So the Pokemon. It's a Pokemon DS game? It's a DS game. Yeah. It the cartridge has a Bluetooth receiver built into it, but it only acknowledges the uh, keyboard the special DS ISO format keyboard that comes with it. Uh, I see we have huh. broken somebody here. <laughs> I <laughs> You know, I, so there's no way around that. You can't like Not put the, the Bluetooth well, receiver in another keyboard or do some electrical in theory, engineering. You can, like, in, in theory, somebody can make an adapter to spoof the key, the the um, the nice Miss Crush the DS keyboard, but that does not exist, as far as I know. So this is a notorious. Eight range. people have played this game. <laughs> Only eight. Mm. And how many oh, copies no. are out there? I, I'll, I'll Only five one. people have sp have done the speed run. This keyboard so I is so eight people have played an effort. Okay, hopefully this keyboard. works. Uh, so the problem with these alphas, right? Uh, these are random wild Pokemon. I, I got the range cool. Um, these are wild Pokemon that are generated every playthrough. So this could be a plus defense Scudra with three EL defense, which EL is basically just a replacement for IVs in this game. Um, and three is the maximum, so it could just be an impossible range if that is such a Gudra that I get spawned. And um, it has a really cool move called Shelter. Which it can oh yeah, use. Shelter's, Shelter's cursed, actually. <laughs> shelter yeah, increases so defense and increases evasion at the same time. You become obscured, I believe? Yeah. Yep. Actually? Actually? I read that message in chat just now. Melly could be an ancestor to Skun Tank, and I believed it. <laughs> that is just so good. I like him <laughs> I oh never God. wanted to read a sentence less than that sentence, because I really like Jupiter. <laughs> Oh my god, I agree with the good second news, sentence though. Good news, because is also good, so it's just a good to good pipeline. Anyways. I'm glad we're all in such agreement here. <laughs> so, when uh, I first got... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the, the alphas being both ranges hit has really helped our time so far. Because those can be really problematic if we don't hit the ranges. I was going to say that you should make a whole poster board explaining why Belly... Yeah. Please do that. If I get into AGDQ, please do that, Corp. Me, I would. I would right. appreciate it. I'll, I will make my like my Melly like shrine board. <laughs> That'll be fantastic. Um, like all right, so I have some stuff to explain right here, and it's just how much <laughs> I appreciate. Uh, well, I'm not Melly. looking at the screen because I'm gonna vomit at the sight of him. I remember when I first got that emote. You were like, "Who? Oh, <laughs> ew! Who got a Melly emote? Me." <laughs> That's ex that's the exact reaction of everyone on Twitch. It was like, who has a Melly emote? Who cared enough about Melly to make a Melly emote? And I should have known immediately because I already knew Melly liked May at that point, or the other way around. I'm sure Melly likes May well, too. Well, I'm sure Melly, Melly does like May too. Yeah. 
I mean, if you have like, it's like that meme of like one person standing in the stands at a sports game or something. Like, you know, if that's your only fan, you gotta treasure them. I am not just being contrarian. I like disaster characters. Uh huh. Okay, this one's funny. this movement's kind of technical because I have to switch to Braviary and not get caught. I think that was kind of early. Okay, I barely made it. Oh, I switched to weird. You, 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 did, you didn't make that one. No, I didn't. That's fine. No, no, that barely so, worked. So because this part of the game is like such a slog with so much plot, there is like a Every lot of time to be. Matters. Yeah, there's a lot of time to be like gained, but it's like the worst part to practice because it's like all it is is movement. But like, yeah, I, I gotta practice, practice this movement part. during the end game. You can practice this movement in any part of the game. You just load up your casual save and practice this. No, yeah. but that would that would involve deliberate practice of speedrunning. All right, overquill, very good. Who's oh, that? okay. I know you're joking, T Pet, but this um, the best one. what I got? Oh wait, I'm I'm using the wrong Pokemon. <laughs> okay, it'll be fine. He's gonna use Double Edge and kill me, and then take a lot of damage, and then. Well, that Pokemon um, text is captioning is very funky. Have you seen the YouTube video of all the legendary cries in text speech? Yes, it's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> the Giratina one's probably my favorite. It's like, <laughs> 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 Pokemon 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 Oh, okay. What I was gonna say is how I got, oh, hit the range. Nice. How I improved at this game um, was I traded every area like an IL and just kind of grinded them over and over again. Like I, the record holder at the time was O Snap, um, and I'll just watch Snap's video and, and just kind of time how long he did Cobalt Coastlands, for example. And I would time how long my Cobalt Coastlands is in the video and just try to shave off that amount of time in just an IL run and just restart the save over and over again until I matched it or beat it. And eventually, with that. Muscle memory just kind of builds with Pokemon. That does that definitely helps with the memorization of the decks and what you need to do. Um, like for example, knowing that Glamiel is feed four, catch one. You know, uh, you could you know be a bookworm and study it like Shady, or you just kind of brute force it <laughs> and you know commit it to muscle memory like I do. I also recommend recreating the uh, oh there you are um, the catch route on the, with the Ranger tool. Oh yeah, yeah Ranger tool is super helpful. If you want to link that, May. I don't know if I have permission to post links. I could link the ranger tool, I guess. Yeah, I could yeah. link my own. Sorry, I'm twisting your arm there. <laughs> <laughs> now, the ranger tool has Is unironically completely just changed how speedrunning this game works. Like, it would be an absolute nightmare to route otherwise. You can even use this casually if you're trying to do things. I have. In terms of this uh, Azolf little battle thing. Can't you soft lock if you throw a bomb too early or something? Yeah. Um, something along the lines of if the bomb collides with Azelf the moment it spawns, because you're not supposed to be able to hit it until the final part. Because that counts as hitting it and the game's like, well, you hit me and I don't know what to do. I don't know how you did this, but I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think you'd get this far. <laughs> I have to think about what just happened. Give me a second. It doesn't just like take a bit and then it works. I, I, I have no talk, idea. Uh, you can talk to Adam in to fix it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. All right, so now we have all three parts. Yep, we're going to make the red chain. Yeah. Um, and also, it's a small little optimization. Um, we did Crimson Myrlands last. You can do the lakes in any order, but we do Myrlands last because uh, the next part of the game um, is going to bring us to Crimson Myrlin, so we just save that little bit of loading time. Mm -hmm. It's actually a noticeable right now, difference. Uh, well, not right now, but after we finish talking to Volo right here, if you're in another area, it has to pull you out of that area, go to Crimson Myrlands, and then load the right area. But because we're already in Crimson Myrlands, we just warp directly to the ruins here. So, yeah, like Etiquette said, it was just a little bit of load time saving. And the reason we did uh, Iceland's first is because the cursor was already there when we started the lake quests. True. So that's the that's why we choose the order that we do. Secondary reason, uh, Gudra's terrible. We want to do as much as we can before Gudra. 
Just in case you could possibly level up, I don't know. One can dream. I mean, the damage formula in this game is wibbly wobbly anyways. Oh yeah, so we never really went deep into detail about that, but what I will say about the damage formula is in the same part that level is multiplied times three, attack stat is multiplied by 0.1. So that should give you an indication of how much level matters compared to the attack stat, which is why we're oh, able weird. to use a Sneasel to sweep the end, end game of this game. And which is why we're able to use a level eight Syndical to like just knock down like 320-ish level butterflies. This game is weird. It's so weird. <laughs> it's very weird. But uh, the research is extremely fun. Which is why I, there's I a cool... Like, I like, what? Um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, it's why there's a cool category for All Lords. Which yeah, May I, um, loves. I never run it. In speedruns, I generally just really like movement. Which, um... You know, uh, Wartab was always kind of teasing. I thought he was teasing me because of how much I practice roller skates, but he actually did consider me the best in X and Y at roller skates because movement's something I kind of value in runs, so it's I something can't. I practice a lot. Can you do the swizzle? Can't do the parallels. I can't do the I, parallel I swizzle, swizzle everywhere I can possibly do swizzles. I can't hold the... the it's literally just ESS from Ocarina of Time. I don't, I don't know what this means. The extended super maybe you should is a position just outside friend. of neutral. Maybe if you ask nicely, Melly will tell you how to swizzle. I don't think Melly not. Melly is a bitch. I don't think roller skates are invented yet. Yeah. <laughs> Why would Melly know that? Um. So in the documentary, um, <laughs> what? Uh, I don't remember that. In there's the a, what? There's a joke here. I was going to refer to a really bad movie, but I forgot the name of it. So moving on. Okay. Uh, but yeah, movement is something I really like in this game, and with it being an action RPG, um, with Weird Ear, Basket Legion, Braviary, there's a lot of uh, room for cool and in inventive movement. And like, Weird Ear can literally climb up anything, <laughs> so that's really cool. And I like on-the-fly decision-making, because I ran PMD for like eight years. Uh, so for some reason, even though we were literally in the Galactic head Headquarters, it says we're at the front gate on the map there. I don't know why, but we do need to warp to the front gate. How convenient. Well, if you were to sit there and mash A, it's actually more text boxes than choosing where to go from the pick list, surprisingly. Because your cursor starts where you are on the map, so technically you could just mash A to go to the front gate. But it is one more text box. I think you're about to pick up a fairly important item. Just maybe. I don't know which item it is, but there's one item in this endgame sequence that they will literally create a slot in your satchel for. It's the one that I, Melly gives you. Is it? I think it's the Ultra I think Balls. He, I think he gives you... Ultra. I thought it was like... I think it's after the Ultra Balls and he's just like, here, I'm helping. And he gives you like mushroom cakes or something. Oh, he gives you cake, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, oh my god. Candy truffles. Yeah. Because I, I can find those. I thought it was you can that find item. those, um, you can find them all the time digging with our Saluna. That's why I know their name. I get them way too often and catch them all. Because you have to dig with our Saluna for peat blocks and black augurites, and you can get sunstones from the ground. Uh, mud balls are really good too. You can get a lot of good stuff from the ground, but candy truffles are not it. Isn't it ironic that that's the item that Melly gives you? No, it's perfectly, it's perfectly on brand for Melly to continue to be useless in my speedrun. All right, anyways. That's, really like the <laughs> that's, our, uh, that's our second to last uh, interaction with Melly, thank God. Um, but for now, we have to come over here. Yeah, I still got to give you candy truffles for some reason. Uh, he shouted, but I was too far away. Artist door to get into. So, um, oh, flawless. Ooh. All right. I love it when you get I on Sneezler there. We've kind of just like went right by it. Um, but there is like a consistent way to, to pass Pokemon in this game. Uh, they will always turn the shortest direction to look at you. So, if they're like, imagine it's like a clock face and you're approaching from six o'clock. 
if the Pokemon is facing at 2 o'clock, it will turn clockwise to look at you. And alternatively, if it's at like 10 p.m. or 10 on the clock, it'll turn counterclockwise to look at you. So by knowing that, if you expect it to go counterclockwise, you can run clockwise around it and the other way around. So you can always pass Pokemon if you just know which way they're facing, which way is the shortest way for them to look at you. This was a weird reveal. He's a ninja. I got to sing the Wally theme. I want there to be the Wally theme in this game. I so wish quickly. there was the Wally theme. I wish there was more than two battle themes. Just let's start with that. <laughs> That's going to be my most scathing criticism of this game, because otherwise it's pretty good. Is only two? There's That's the... going to kill me. There's the Giratina one. Mm, okay, well, it's fine to get killed there. Uh, that one goes hard. The Giratina yep. one, yeah. Oh, oh Giratina is so, so good. good. Yeah. Like I want to say it was like post game where I was just like, wow, there's so much more music in this game right now yeah. <laughs> than there was through the entirety of the main game. It's just because the moment you can fly. You're not constantly like getting into uh, into range and stuff, mm -hmm. which then puts the like the tension music. Yeah, because like there's the genie theme, there's the legendary theme. I think the legendary theme and the genie theme are like the same though. Um, there's the Giratina theme. There's the spoiler bonus boss fight theme. That theme, that theme's a thrasher. That theme is incredible. Oh my oh god. god, so good. Mm -hmm. It's even more incredible Dropping when you're on like pace to kill the catch all category and you have to redo the fight twice because you're dumb. Uh, uh, definitely, not, definitely not projecting You need to hear it two more <laughs> twice. Honestly, win. True. Yeah, I was the real winner there. Uh, what do I need now? I think it's Measle. Yeah, May, it's really funny to, to hear you praise music inside the video game when it was you who discovered that it was faster to play video games without the music on. Well, I didn't say the BDSP music was good. <laughs> but the BDSP is just the an ancestor of the music in this game. BDSP music is, like, fine. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier that Sneasel dies very quickly, and that's convenient, because if it if it ever takes more than two turns... Oh my god, this is my last Pokemon. All right, don't miss. Go, Rufflet, go! Go, Rufflet, go! You can do it! Woo! Let's go, Rufflet! Let's go, Rufflet! <laughs> Let's go, Rufflet! Let's go, Rufflet. <laughs> Let's go rough. If you've Let's ever go. needed a more Let's go, you know, prevalent example of the battle formula being very, very off, that turn should tell you. A, a rufflet ten levels lower than Gallade just killed it with Brave Bird. Yeah, that's because that's because birds can't live. The, the little rufflet that could. I'm I'm sad that rufflet's no longer in the current route, but I'm just be grateful rufflet happened. I think. I love that Magnezone is It's better to have loved bird. and lost than never to have loved at all. See, May gets it. Magnezone is a bird. That is correct. It is technically a flying Pokemon in this game. I'll give you that. Okay, this is uh, our second to last fight coming, on, uh, coming up. Our last meaningful fight because the other fight is kind of a joke. The other fight is weird. You just kind of mash A through it. Hey, look, you can almost completely pillar, mash A on the fight. Because, like, oh, no, I was talking about the the charm fight. Yeah, the final boss. <laughs> the final it's a weird boss fight. of the game. The final human fight in this run. Um, but no, um, we're going to get the legendary. Spoilers. Um, and its first move is Earth Power. And we kind of just spam that on the last human fight. And uh, if the legendary dies, you send out Gastron and use its earth power. If earth power was in the first slot, <laughs> you could literally just mash A the entire fight. Because Gastron's first in the menu, uh, earth power is the August first move, and then in that case, Gastron's first move would be earth power. So it's literally just a mash A fight. <laughs> literally, <Swap the laughs> you, can just, you can just smooth brain it super hard. Just put zero effort into the video game. This should kill. I hope it does. That's kind of sad. Actually, that's kind of fine. Can use the max potions that completely resets everything. Never mind. I lied. Okay. Oh. 
Normally, uh, using an item takes about as long as a strong style move. I guess that time it didn't. All right, second, second chance to get the range. Cool. All right, we're good. Uh, calculated because now we die quicker. I mean, it was a golem, so we were gonna die quick anyway. <laughs> Did you know that this your one job? Did you know that this ground type golem does not have a ground type move? Really? Happens. It has bulldoze, doesn't it? No, uh, Kamado's oh, Norlax is its is its uh, ground type oh, yeah, move because it has high, high horsepower. Horse power. Right. Yeah, so Gastrodon lives here like a lot, which is kind of inconvenient. I wish it didn't. It even lives like Giga Impact from Snorlax, which I'm surprised it didn't go for there. Uh, or Sneasel. There you are. Okay. There is a possibility that you can get a triple turn here um, if uh, Gastron dies to a uh, Giga Impact. You can do Agile Sword Dance into something, into something, and get three turns in a row. Because Agile, or because Giga Impact leaves a lot of, like, I don't want to say ending lag. <laughs> That's not correct, but a lot of recovery for Snorlax, I guess I'll say. Yeah, it slows its initiative by quite a margin. I want to say ending lag because fighting games, that's all my life has been for the last week, so. The, the equivalent is, like, Giga Impact and Hyper Beam. It's like after you use it, you lose your next Odd. turn, but that's not a mechanic. So it kind of has the same initiative as just outright using a strong style move. So if you strong style a like a slow turn, I mean, you're really pushing back your initiative big time. So it's okay, definitely so not uncommon to get three turns in a row. Somebody in chat asked which legendary is better. We did say it, but we didn't really explain why. Um, Dialga is weak to close combat, so we can do a regular close combat and get it down to a catchable amount of HP. Um, we don't have anything that is super effective against Palkia. However, it is my personal belief, and I hope it'll come out with the catch rate uh, discoveries from Anubis, that I, th I genuinely believe a status condition is better than any amount of HP you can get the Pokemon to. I've had way better results with just inflicting a status and not weakening at all than I have weakening these Pokemon. I mean, we all we know for sure is that the catch rate is different. <laughs> yeah. Because if we I were mean, just we know what the modifier if we were just... is for statuses, but we don't know what the modifier is for HP being low. Yeah, it's we're we're given ten Ultra Balls here, and it's not uncommon to just catch. Dialga, like, first ball from, like, half HP. Which, if you try to do that in, like, a... We'll call it a normal mainline game. If you try to do that in BDSP, you'd have to be incredibly lucky. So there are some odd modifiers and formulas at play. Yeah, I went to Evo this past weekend, and I also got one of these, like, little uh, fight pads that they had commissioned for Evo. Who's that cool as your numpad? <laughs> Use that as my notepad. I don't even know if I could do that. I'd have to like program numbers to it. I don't even know if that's possible. Or it's beyond my understanding is probably the better way to put it. You could uh, strong close combat this, but there's a very good chance you'll kill it, so I don't want to do that. You would have definitely killed that with strong. Oh, yeah, I'm, never mind. I'm 62, I just realized. Yeah. Um, let's go roughly. Let's go Rufflet. Let's got this. <laughs> yeah, I can't use ground moves. Don't worry, you'll right, just, so yeah, you'll just is, catch um, it first ball. The whole thing where you, the game I got you to first ball. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, sick. That saves a lot of time. Okay. Poke it into existence. Uh, okay, You're welcome. We may, actually, we may actually get underestimate. Hopefully. Yeah, we could maybe do it. I don't know. I don't remember how long the end game is, but it's no more than 10 minutes from here, so. Just don't get cringed on on the next human fight. Please. That has Please. not happened to me in months. I hope it doesn't happen. But, you know, with how <laughs> marathon runs there. have been for me, or like, you know, uh, exhibition runs, I should say, the end game likes to troll and invent new problems. Like the nine ball Dialga fest I mentioned. Wouldn't be a problem. 
All lords. Yeah, maybe we'll do that for, uh, what's that one show? Uh, no category left behind. Or we do the category extensions. Oh, um, that's uh, no category left behind. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I appreciate the fact where uh, Kamado is like trying to say we need to have a tactical retreat and it's just like, ah, s screw the fancy talk. Like, book it, get out of here. Okay, <laughs> that would bother me so much. Like, we're down here just talking and there's like a rampaging beast up there. Are you just gonna leave that there unattended? Like, yeah, no, I also thought this was weird. Like, why are we just here? Like, the, the problem's up there causing more problems, probably destroying things. We don't know what it's gonna do. We need to be up there handling well, the situation. Because they, they need to get Spear Pillar in the condition so that it looks right for Gen 4. I'm pretty sure it crumbled in the inch, in the cutscene I skipped right before the legendary fight. I think you're right. Yeah, that's correct. Weird so fun it, fact about BDSP is Spear Pillar has a mirror image depending on if you're playing the Pearl or the Diamond version. Right, I believe that came up um, because somebody's developing, uh, you know, somebody's doing God's work and is developing a auto music tool for BDSP speedruns where it looks at your game and determines what music to play on your computer. You don't have to do yep. speedruns in silence. Yeah, and, and it uh, was... It wouldn't uh, work it was, on Spear Pillar. <laughs> Yep, because it was uh, originally programmed for the uh, Brilliant Diamond image, and it was like, why is this not working? Because most people, like Etiquette, plays on uh, Shiny Pearl, and we figured um, it out. They're literally mirror images. What a weird quirk. It's so weird. Yeah, so next it's, time it's... that you see a BDSP speed run, look at a Brilliant Diamond versus a Shining Pearl run up there, and you'll be like, oh, the pillars are... Weird. They're like slightly off. Like it's not, it's not like a drastic difference. It's like one of them is slightly in front of the other one, and that's it. That's the whole difference. <laughs> well, because if you look at the pillars from one angle, it looks like the alga, but if you look at it from a different angle. And was it, it like was it the same way in the original, or was no? That couldn't have been the same in the original. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember that either. Honestly, probably. Given the amount they changed in BDSP, it's probably the same. It did basically use the same map code. It's just one-to-one -one tile grid. I just wonder why I'd bother flipping it. <laughs> there had to be some purpose. Like, that's work. That like, somebody at had some to point, speedrunners are going to figure out that it saves time to turn off the music, and they're going to make a way <laughs> to use images to bring it back, and we're going to mess with them. So we need to impede their... Uh their work because they've already committed heresy by turning off our music we worked hard to design. So upcoming here is the final battle of the game. It is, some might even the call this final the final boss. boss. <laughs> the final <laughs> boss of the any percent speedrun. And it's it's these clowns. <laughs> it's charm. They're just going to get in our way for uh, no reason. First, First of like all, Melly, we, like what is with people just getting in our way for like no reason? We left the the Temple of Sinnoh with the rampaging legendary Pokemon, and now we're here, and be and they're like, no, we're gonna stop you. Yeah, Mango Destroyer. Um, we had a choice earlier what? for uh, choosing the Diamond Clan or the Pearl Clan. We chose the Pearl Clan, which made our legendary that we caught on top of the Spear Pillar be Dialga. But we're gonna fight uh, Palkia as the final fight of the game. Uh, if you were to choose the Pearl Clan, it would be reversed. You would have Palkia right now and be fighting Dialga as the final fight of the game. Uh, Dialga is harder to fight, actually, than Palkia for the final fight because it has a smaller hitbox, so it's harder to hit. Uh, but otherwise, it's the ex exact same fight. And they actually have pretty much the exact same movesets. Well, they both have a, they both have Earth Power, so both Palkia right. and Dialga are capable of just doing this hit, fight. Just hit through Hypnosis. It'll be great, right? You'll, you oh, can nice do it. Drop. I'm definitely dead if I don't get this. Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. If you uh, if you don't hit through hypnosis, uh, you get a very cringy charm fight. So update. They were mirror imaged in the originals. There you go. And it's the exact Weird. same difference. And then platinum has a different spear. Told you. I told you. <laughs> This, this somehow makes sense, but I'm just baffled that no one noticed. It only makes sense because you already know it's the case in BDSP. Well, like, if, if that was not previously known, it'd still yeah. be just as much of a shock, I'm sure. 
It's it's not just the pillars, it's the pillars and there's a bunch of like ruined walls and stuff. Shout out to the three flipped. different spear pillars ex existing. Oh, sorry, we chose the we chose the diamond clan. I misspoke, I'm sorry. We chose the diamond clan, we could have chosen the pearl clan. <laughs> I'm just imagining that the that the sinnohs of of diamond and pearl are actually just just in in parallel mirror planes of one another. And just imagine yeah. like imagine if the whole Sinnoh map was reversed as a result. It's like how Oras like is an alternate universe. Okay, so unfortunately we're no, that would be like by if, a little bit, but uh, this will definitely still be a sub four, so that's still pretty good. That, that'd be like if Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were in alternate u universes. They are. No, no worries. Are they? Me. Yeah. Oh wait, you're right because their hideouts are mirrored. This this all makes sense now. It's all okay, but all coming about together. Oras, because Oras's oh, uh, Oras um, bases are like very clearly mirrored, or it's just not as yeah, yeah. it's not as noticeable. It's, in like, DP. it's not even like a true mirror. Like stuff's just in different spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like clearly for different. example. <laughs> Like, for example, in Alpha Sapphire, you get to talk to a tree and you get a Master Ball. Yeah. I wish you'd done this Where, game. Whereas so in Omega Ruby, uh, you forget your left from right yeah, okay. and you talk oh to an God. Electrode. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so funny. funny. You should all watch Speedrun Survivor. Etiquette's in it. And May is in it. And I am in, not in it, but I'm enjoying watching it. You're in the credits, though, aren't you? I delivered weather forecasts for all their outdoor bits, and that's why I'm in the credits. As a, Josh was literally, Josh why. was literally, okay. Josh that. was literally messaging me like every day, being like, "Is the rain gonna come? When is it gonna come? When do I need to stop filming outdoors?" So I was that's giving so him good. personalized weather casts, and then he asked me, "Do you want to be in the credits?" And I said, "Sure." That's so funny. I was like, maybe T Pat imparted some, you know. RS knowledge from being the uh, E4 round two world record holder or something. It's like, funny you say that. Nah, um, <laughs> un unwillingly, uh, I gave Pulse my E4 round two notes, but he didn't mm. tell me what for. So, <sighs> yeah, Pulse is actually using my notes. I, I got some. Powers. I got some silence here. I, I feel. I feel a bit of a shade, as if I'm like help the wrong team. No, I can't. We can't. We can't talk about I know. anything about that I, point. I, I, I think you may not have even used the notes for all you know. I, we don't you, know, I, and I don't know. No, we don't know either. Okay. The moment that we left, we had Josh took out like the Men in Black pen and wiped our memories of everything that <laughs> happened that weekend. So I can't. I don't. I honestly don't remember. Yeah, I'm gonna demonstrate passing an alpha. You know, I, I knew it was gonna turn counterclockwise. So I ran or it was gonna turn. You know, it was gonna turn counterclockwise, so I ran continuously counterclockwise around it. Because uh, it wouldn't see me that way. Hi, Volo. Hi, Volo. Is he looking sus yet? Spoilers. There's nothing wrong with Volo. He's a stand up okay. guy. That literally, yeah. one of the first things he does is teach you how to backstab people. Backstab that Pokemon. Is? Oh, sorry, yeah, Pokemon. Not people. Well, that'd be silly. So we're, so we're not voting him out of the region. No, no, he gets to stay. Okay. The only crime that Volo's done is being on the hashtag grind. <laughs> True. He's like everywhere. He's out there getting those satchels for Ginter. Insane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's working twenty-five-seven. It can't be that easy to move. He's literally like seven feet tall. Twenty-five-eight. Yeah, Volo is stupidly tall. Like Melly's legit, here. like, like, like if the you same look at his, height. yeah. If you look at their concept art and they talk about how tall they are, I'm just like, why is Volo nearly seven feet tall? That's so bad. Make any sense. I think I think eight inches of Melly's height is hat though. Very yeah. True. All right, so this is the final. This is the actual final boss of the game. It's, it's Palkia. Um, this fight's pretty fun. Yeah, this one's fun. Uh, it like makes these big old well, meteors. Draco, and then Draco meteors. Leaves. Oh, yeah. And then that leaves uh, fire. You don't want to stand in the fire because then you get knocked back. Um, 
You just gotta do this for a bit. Are you yeah, gonna do the fun? Like... Are you gonna do the fun yep. little? Yep. Very good. So you actually take the intentional damage from the little fire here because Whatever. it has a smaller stagger uh, than roll dodging the like the aura wave attack or whatever I'll you want to call it. Force energy in this fight, honestly. Just hit him, please. Ah, uh, you were one away. Good job. And that is time. Time. GG. GG. Good run. And that was uh, that was a sub four. So I mean, not quite the estimate, unfortunately, but that uh, a coronet incident kind of killed it for us. I don't know what you're but. talking about. Looked like underestimate to me. Yeah, oh, yeah it looks, looks like it's underestimate. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I forgot that we changed the timing to be the last hit and not like the fade out after this cutscene. Mm -hmm. Which is a good change we did, and I was like, I don't know if this is going to be under four. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a couple text boxes, but you can take, watch this cutscene. Yeah, that's yeah, why I this timing. This, this, this cutscene is so good. And then we get rid of all of our RGB gamer lights in the sky. And now our RGB lights are so overrated. I hate them so much. If I could not, opt out of RGB for cheaper anymore. computer parts, I would. It's so obnoxious. Fair. Anyways, glad that's gone. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy that I got this opportunity. I actually started speedrunning like nine years ago, watching Summer Games Done Quick 2013. And I wasn't ever certain I would get a chance to be on this uh, platform, but I'm really happy that I got the chance to do this. So thank you guys. Yeah, you have no Thanks idea. Having us. I was excited when I saw you submit this game and I was like, I love this game. I just need to have a slot for it because I planned <laughs> out a bunch of shows up until like, uh, up until um, SGDQ and like the week right after that. And I'm like, oh heck, I, where, when do I fit this in? And I finally had an opening and I was just like, please run this game. I love it. But yes, <laughs> thank you so much for being Amber's on the like show. And was like sliding a 20 to games committee being like, defer it to AGDQ. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately, like none of us have that influence, but it no, yeah, really, not at all. like this would be okay. such a nice comfy. I would, I would oh, submit like, it. It would be I such a nice comfy AGDQ. run, honestly. You should submit it. Like, I, I would love seeing this on the big stage, personally. Yeah, I'll, be, um, I'll be doing this run live at Midwest Speedfest in a couple weeks. I'm doing it for the PSR Marathon in two weeks as well. So it, it'll be around. People want to see it. So And you all and y'all should follow Halk. Uh, he does this game quite frequently and does the catch em all category as well. Very, very comfy streams, but obviously incredibly high-level gameplay. Uh, with PLA. I mean, he's pushed this game to a level that most of us didn't even think was possible months ago, and it's still being developed, so there's going to be new strats, and um, you'll you'll see the times continue to tumble. I mean, you think 345 is fast now, uh, as you mentioned, like, 340 is possible. Yeah, and I owe Josh, like, 10 gift subs if that happens. I told him it would never sub XY. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. This, it just means you gotta lower the XY time. No, I'm not capable. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that his game, responsibility. That, look, 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 I'll grind this game to hell and back, and I know it has a lot of problems and no, a lot of slow parts, but grinding Lucha is not fun. Grind, grinding XY is so miserable. Yeah. yeah. Um, if and you should follow the other commentators that aren't me. If yes. You want other oh my God. Yes. Running, Two of these uh, people have to work like really early well. in the morning, and they stayed up pretty late for this shift, and I really, really appreciate their input. And, and yeah, Corfman's here, too. <laughs> I had fun. Oh, I had a I'm lot really of fun. I, here. Yeah, thank you for having us, Halk. Um, obviously, thank like you. everybody on the on our commentary couch are very incredible Pokemon speedrunners and um, very incredible people of our community. So, yeah, I have a whole lot of respect for, for May and Etiquette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and they both uh, run RCS from time to time too. So you know, if you want to check the leaderboards, you can see T-Pat and Etiquette's run and Corp and May's electrode nonsense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eighth place, baby. Woo! What, when's that? When's that improvement stream to get on a, a higher plane? Never. Never. <laughs> hey, I can I can vouch. Halk's actually a great coach for PLA and has coached me um, before. So. So I believe in you, May. He'll, I also, he'll coach I also, you. You know, you know, one of my most successful students was a person named Shady Gamer X, and now, uh, 
now they're giving are me a run for my money in this are you category. coaching me are you coaching me an electrode is that what's going on here because that's uh, what i'll coach we're you in about. anything you want in this game man okay uh now that you've completed it i have completed now this was, this was my casual playthrough yeah. after all very fast casual playthrough. First try. Four, it was good, so yeah. Your was first it. try is insane. It was pretty good. Um, yeah, but yeah, if there's anything else, uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I want to thank you all again for being on tonight. Uh, very enjoyable run, and honestly, thank you for submitting it. Uh, that being said, um, we are heading on out. We're uh, Tomorrow we have the first step featuring new Super Mario Brothers, followed by Victory Rap. Victory rap, victory lap featuring Banjo Kazooie, all starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you want more hot fix goodness, tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, and we will be sending you all over to another wonderful person doing speed run and speed adjacent things. So stick around for the raid, and we will see you all very soon. <laughs>